What is everybody? Welcome back to an awesome day of racing action here at Wildcat Off Road Park for the third, I'm sorry, the second race of the National Rock Racing Association. But we're on our second course for the day here. I know I was second race of the National Rock Racing, and this is our second course for the bouncers coming up today. Day two, presented by Mickey Thompson Tire, and today is brought to you by SCS Gearboxes. Again, awesome crowd shot there. You can see how many spectators are packed into this park. And again, me and Bree have talked all weekend about that that uh, kind of amphitheater look for here in Dyersburg, where there's really not a bad seat in the house. Now, years ago when I came to Wildcat to look at the option, this was all woods and uh, kind of a little pond at the bottom down there. And uh, I walked the woods and found some lines, and they, <laughs> they were interested in making it what it is today. And over the years, it's grown into what it is. And for the, I do not have the lovely Bree next to me right now. I got Mr. The Legend and Mr. Klein Bynum sitting next to me. I don't know about Legend, but maybe better looking. Uh, he is the guy that we curse every time we're on a course and we're trying to get over some obstacle and he can't, or we whack a flag that he puts really kind of pinches it in some areas, you know. You know, I can't, I can't uh, help your guys <laughs> driving abilities. So again, we, me and Bree were talking this morning how we have to have those flags and have to have those banners uh, and tape because some of the drivers get very creative on the very, courses. So very, uh, there's certain drivers over the years that would find these lines and and it would upset other drivers and and it still happens today. Uh, but I, I go through and I kind of inspect it for those drivers and, and I'm not gonna mention no names. But uh, I, try, I, I try to see the lines that they're trying to. There's to, there's to, several that uh, the little niches they're trying to find. So. Yeah, yeah, there's several that drivers that are, are they get very creative with that course. And again, walking it really kind of you can. A pick good example is today. Uh, that green patch over there that's no longer a green patch. Yes, you know Clay Kaysen yes. seen that, and after he ran it, you know everybody else took suit. Yeah, to the bouncers. So. And and we were talking this morning while we were up there what the line was, and he said, "Well, it's dirt." And he said, yeah, "And I knew it was there. I didn't say nothing." And Clay come over and goes, "I hope you're not mad at me for creating that line." I was like, "No, I." I knew somebody was going to take yeah. it. And, again, I, I think it's really awesome to see because the guys that do their homework and go up and walk the course. They and, benefit know, from it. That you can see that by doing their homework they can really have that advantage. So it is really neat to see. And you have to kind of respect those guys that can kind of look at a line. Uh, again, I like to pick on Timmy. He sometimes picks a line that no one else sees. Clay's we'll, good about it, too. We'll all go straight. And he comes in at kind of 45 and, and just has a super smooth run. Uh, again, we've seen lots of guys coming up and down. Everybody So far, everybody's kind of pushed hard up. Yep. That downhill section – Kind of a little sketchy, so some guys are it pushing makes, a little harder. Uh, downhill, it makes some people intimidated, uh, and some people actually that's where they that's where they gain momentum. That's what that's their happy place. <laughs> Way so, good is very good at downhill. Yeah, uh, there's a, there's a bunch of drivers out there that were really good at the downhill. Yeah, well again, wait, wait, good. We saw everybody last year. The sec the fastest time was a 48 seconds by Brandon Davis. Wade came in at 40 when he launched off that ledge, just smoked that ledge, came in flying through there. And, and the reason a lot of that happened, you know, a lot of people, you know, that's followed it since the beginning of where we were just straight up a hill one shot, you know, the sport changed so fast we had to adapt to uh, kind of control how the buggies were built. You know, it yeah. turned into a drag race that was 10 seconds long. Yeah. Uh, and it was it was more or less coming about who had the most power instead of who could drive it a lot of yeah. times. So we started creating turns and, and things that – Horsepower will not win it alone. Yeah, and again, we've seen some of those running the rear steer. We've seen some of the guys drift around the corners. We've seen a few flat tires today with some of the rocks and the pinching. Uh, uphill, downhill sections, we have some jumps. Uh, again, we saw Timmy Cameron yesterday whip that uh, that left-hand turn. We've seen several bouncers do that today. So yes. I, I think, again, you might see some more of that this afternoon. So what do you think is going to be the faster times later on this afternoon? Um, You know, I ain't really even thought about it. Uh, I think we'll be sub- minute and a half wow on the second course yeah uh we did create a new uphill over there with a couple of step ups i think that's going to be a little more challenging than new step ups <laughs> so i think it'll uh it'll kind of you know it'll give them a challenge yeah and you'll see some of the guys go up it like it's nothing and some of the guys will struggle with it yeah and, and all that comes down to shock tuning yeah you know, that the guys that have it dialed in you know you'll see those advance on the step ups or the guys that don't have the shocks tuned in and, and you got to find a, a happy medium where they're tuned in for all of it yeah you and know. again, we, we saw Brandon Davis with that IFS going up those that rock ledges. He was able to kind of skip up those. Now again, the, having the lower belly pan might not yep. pan out so well coming down some of these ledges too. So again, well, I think we're about ready to kick off kids class. All right, uh, UTV youth class. So uh, I guess I'm gonna get out of here. Okay, and uh, we'll get started. All right. Again, that's Clyde Taylor. You about, Biden. Taylor, you about ready for uh, start line? Again, that was, that was Clyde Bynum up in the booth with us, so we appreciate him hopping up here and giving some chat. We got Blake Heckley on the line here. Jim, 
have a kids list. Blake Heckley's going to kick us off over there. Getting there, checking her up in that starting gate. Again, we've seen them absolutely get pretty with it down here. So you can hear, you can hear dads and fans and uh, uh, support staff all cheering them on. These kids have been waiting all day, really since yesterday, for their moment to race. Little Blake Heckley asked me last night. <laughs> she came up and gave me a hug. She's like, "When are what day are we racing?" I said, "You're racing tomorrow." <laughs> yep. Yeah. <laughs> She's like, "Okay." But they're excited though. <laughs> Three eight point six four one, our first youth driver of the day. Again, they're all lined up in the starting gate, just chomping at the bit. Sadie Ellison is on the line now. Wow, again, you can see that, that little bit of a gauntlet there as they're bouncing through. I said Daniel Heckley down there cheering them on. I know we have a huge chunk of the dads that are around there. Got a heck of a course here for our youth class today. You know, something that was kind of funny last night was... Um in the campground area where the kids wanted to play ball. Let's get Sadie's time real quick. 37.095 for Sadie Ellison. So I was playing ball with all me and uh, Madison and a couple of moms and some of the older kids. And, you know, we just had a ball and a bat in the gravel yes. camp area. And um, it was really cute because it was obvious that the the chosen sport of these kids is racing. <laughs> they did not know how to play baseball. <laughs> it was lots of action going on. <laughs> it was chaos. <laughs> but it was adorable. <laughs> oh, we've got Collier Hoback out on the course now. Can you, can, you can hear Dad's course workers Hold it to the floor. all cheering for him. Collier's our youngest driver in the youth class at four years old. Wow. <laughs> Jumping through the air there. He is already learning how to how to pilot a vehicle. And, uh, you know, I think it's great for the kids to learn the responsibility that comes with, you know, driving these vehicles and um, start getting that seat time. They're going to be rock stars by the time they're old enough to actually get their driver's license. That's a 41.780. 41.780 for Collier Hoback. Hey, Ava Garner coming off the line here. Her dad, Zach, does our announcing for us at our races. So if you ever hear a guy being honorary and Giving a hard time to some racers, that's that's him. Ava is such a s sweet and responsible young lady. Her vehicle is called the Manager. I believe that. It's very accurate. Because that is, that's Ava. She's the manager. She is the mom of the kids group when they're all hanging out together. She takes care of the younger kids. And she even gave me a ride over here <laughs> to the race hill from the campground in that little 200 this morning. I believe it. Again. My knees were in the dash. <laughs> I, I can imagine that. Like head popping out the top. <laughs> Thirty-eight point two four zero. Our fastest time right now is Sadie Ellison with a 37. And then we've... Excuse me. Then we've got Ava Garner with a 38.2.
Blake Heckley with a 38.6, and Collier Hoback with a 41. Got Dallas Heckley sitting on the line. Right, Part of the other, the other half of that Heckley Racing crew. And really, there's three members of the Heckley Racing because their dad, Daniel, races in the bouncer class and also the UTV stock class. Bill, your radio's hot. You're sitting on your radio, Bill. Nice run from Dallas. Three, five, point six, seven, six. And that is our new leader right now, round one for the UTV youth class. Hunter Vargo on the course now. Hunter is rocking through the course right now, through the finish line. With a 32.881. Wow. That is our new leader. Pushing Dallas Heckley with a 35 down to second currently. And then Sadie Ellison with a 37 sitting in third. Clara Hoback on the line now. Clara was our winner from our season opener race at Winrock. And the Hobacks just came up and gave me some sweet new stickers. So the Hoback Racing has some uh, new orange and pink stickers. So shout out to all the uh, Hoback Racing crew. Got to represent. I like their, uh, their new merch. It's pretty sweet. Fun fact about Clara's win from Windrock. Uh, that was her first time winning first place wow. in a race, and her prize is she gets to get a pick out a kitten. Okay, okay. <laughs> three six point zero three zero. Oh, didn't they win a chicken or something at one point? A chicken? <laughs> didn't they win a chicken? I think it was always a kitten. Um, so it, this award rolled over from last season. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Because um, this was her first win, so she had yeah, to okay. earn the kitten. Yes. So if anybody's got a, she, she's got her heart set on a a gray female kitten. She's gonna name okay. it Winnie. Okay. Because she gets okay. it for winning. Winning. I I like it. I well well played. So there's a little fun fact for you: racing for kittens out here. <laughs> racing for kittens. We got Ramsey Trainer out there on the course. That's the other half of that trainer racing team. Mr. Rowdy Boy himself, he has some great merch. Uh, again, we uh, do our Feature Driver Friday, thanks to Bree, uh, for setting that up. I think I think what I might do is we might have his, his shirts, just because he has some of the coolest merch, and he's a kid, which is even cooler, I think. It's a picture of him. 3 32.527. 32.527. That is our new leader. Wow. Wow. Again, he has a picture of him holding a trophy on his own T-shirt. I'm like, that's pretty slick. Yeah, we have a lot of uh, great merch from many of our drivers, and that's kind of what prompted us doing the Feature Driver Friday was we just wanted to be able to show the love and represent for um, all of our drivers that share their merch with us. So Colby Reich was our Feature Driver yesterday. We had some of those. Uh, green eight up racing shirts on. Speaking of green, Lincoln Phelps out on the course now. Got some uh, Tim Cameron color scheme going on, it looks like, with that black and neon.
37.064 for Lincoln Phelps. That black and green chassis kind of looked like uh, Ethan Martin up there for a minute. I mean, obviously a much smaller vehicle, but... <laughs> Scaled down. Much quieter as well. Laney Feltner sitting on line. Laney Feltner took third place from our season opener at Windrock a few weeks ago. I think uh, we have fans yelling. We have <laughs> course <laughs> workers yelling. yelling. Go, go. It's so neat. Again, just everybody kind of gets into it and is just so enthusiastic about our youth class. Again, they are taking off hard out of that race line starting gate. Again, you can see the Mickey, Fla Mickey Thompson and the uh, SCS gearbox flags waving out there. Again, a, l a little bit easier course for the youth class, obviously, but they're still crossing some of those caverns that are just <laughs> bouncing through there in these little youth, youth rigs. 39.548 for Laney Filner. I'm sure the kids are just glad to not be wheels deep in mud oh, man. like they were at Winrock. It was literally just, it, they would get stuck and they have to like just slowly go. Dads were pushing them around the course. And it was kind of funny to watch a kid just have to have his dad like literally just like trudge behind him as he's walking. All right, we've got Kenley Havens out on the course. It's like they're playing Mario Kart out there. It really is kind of. Uh, again, watch him kind of just pinball through this thing. Uh, again, these are also rear-wheel drive vehicles. These are not four-wheel drive, uh, the smaller carts for the kids. I need someone to, like, throw banana peels out <laughs> while they're racing. They would probably avoid do a, them. Do, like, a, a yeah. Bowser or yeah. Princess Peach scheme. 38.745 for Kenley Havens. We've got Ridge Brown, I believe, on the line now. And I think this will almost... All right. All right. Justin just confirmed this will be our last race of the first course of the UTV Youth Class. And then we're going to run it back and let them go ahead and run course two. <laughs> oh, no. Again, you can see. Daniel Heckley with the assist. <laughs> dads and course workers and uh, media people and spectators out there. It is so it is so neat to see how much support our youth racers get. Forty three point five five three. We're gonna step away for a quick commercial break and when we come back we'll give you that rundown from round one and head right into round two for our youth class. Rebirthed from the depths of Baja, Mickey Thompson Tires announces a new American mud terrain legend. The new Baja Legend MTZ. Silica reinforced T4 tread compound. Power ply three ply construction. Improved four pitch side biters. Proven MTZ tread styling for undisputed traction. 35 different sizes, and one is just waiting for your rig. The Baja Legend MTZ. All right, we are back. We had finished course one for our UTV drivers. Our youth class, I'll give you guys the top three rundown from round one. Ramsey Trainer had the fastest time with a 32.5. Then Hunter Vargo right behind him with a 32.8. And then Miss Dallas Heckley with a 35, rounding out your top three. Looks like Clara Hoback on the line. Again, this will be course two for our youth class. 
Clara's got a beautiful new wrap on I was her just, buggy. I was just looking at that. Yeah, she was excited to show it to me when I, I rode with them here from Middle Tennessee when I got to their house and she asked if I'd seen it yet and I was like, "No, I didn't. I just, uh, you know, yeah. didn't didn't go back there and look." So That's super she had neat. to take me and and show me. Yeah. It looks great. She's got those super grip tires on there doing work today. So if Clara wins again, does that mean she gets two kittens? Oh, that's that's a that's a slippery How slope. How many kittens are going to end up in the Hoback household <laughs> after this season? It is, it is. That is a slippery slope, Bree. I, I was thinking that was looking like a new wrap. I wasn't hundred percent sure. Yeah, it looks good. Got the ombre pink. Yeah, I it's like it. Got like it. a honeycomb design on it. I like it. it looks really sharp. Again, it's really neat to Got see. Got sponsors there on the side. Really neat to see some of the uh, youth racers kind of take on that uh, bigger appeal. Another fun thing about the youth class, not only are they learning, you know, just how to drive in general and having fun out here, but Clara has been learning her states in school, and one way she's remembered them is by um, – remembering all her friends from racing and what state they're from. Okay, okay. And, and, like, that's how she's keeping it in her brain. I like it, and that works. That's a 34.846 for Clara. And then we were talking about the running order being odds and evens, and she said that's how she knows her odds and evens numbers. Okay. is from it's, because we do it I on like race it. days for hey, running order. Hey, as long as you learn it, it doesn't matter how. <laughs> so it goes beyond just learning how to drive and having fun. These kids are learning some other stuff, some legit stuff out here. Ramsey Trainer out on the course now. Ramsey had our fastest time from round one. Let's see if he can pull it off again. There he goes. <laughs> Looking pretty good for Ramsey. Three two point two one six, Mr. Ramsey Trainer, Mr. Rowdy Boy himself. Lincoln Phelps on the line now. Yep. Got Lincoln Phelps coming off the line here again. That black and green. UTV drivers, Bounty Hill drivers, Bounty class, y'all start getting ready. Y'all are going to be next. Tell back to follow, but y'all better suit up anyway. <laughs> All right, Lincoln. Thirty-five point six one four for Lincoln Phelps. Where is everybody tuning in from right now on Hillside Live? And are you cheering on one of our youth drivers? I see Carrie Brown saying, "Let's go, Ridge Runner." That's a good name. Good that nickname. is a that's a good one. And way to go, Hunter. Who else do we have out there cheering on your favorite little youth driver? I said I've heard of Rum Runner. Old Scott go forth. <laughs> Kenley Havens on the course now. Again, Kenley having that uh, purple window net looking good. So all of our drivers out here in all classes, uh, since you mentioned window nets, Matt, uh, one of our safety requirements is that they need to have either a window net or have wrist restraints on. Obviously, in the event of uh, something like a rollover, we don't want any hands coming oh, out yeah. of the vehicle yeah. at any point. So that's what that requirement is for. 
35.457 for Kinley Havens. Laney Feltner on the line. It looks like there's a little pink mouth on the front of that buggy. <laughs> kind of does, doesn't it? I still think that a land rush start would be the greatest thing ever. Would be highly entertaining. Yeah. <laughs> Justin Hoback and I were talking about that, and he said, <laughs> I don't think I want Clara to do that, though, because she she gets aggressive. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I think our youth racers are very competitive. They'd be rubbing. Yeah. Hey, guys, that hill ain't going to change. You do these drivers. Get to your buggies. Taylor, can you ask him to repeat that, please? That's a 36.619 for Lanny Feltner. See Justin Wills getting them all lined up there. Ridge Got Ridge Brown. Brown there on the line. Ripping out of that race line go, starting Ridge gate. Runner. Again, got the uh, rock rings and cage to match. His mom's cheering him on from home. She says, floor it, kiddos. <laughs> I think he is flooring it. <laughs> again, these do it's not a have. a hill for a little buggy. These do not have a ton of power and, again, are only rear-wheel drive. Three five point nine nine three for Mr. Ridge Brown and the Ridge Runner. Just give them a few more years. We'll be seeing some of these kids in uh, full size UTVs. I, I think bet. so. We saw Brantley Havens yeah. in the stock class UTV stock class yesterday, and uh, he raced with us in the youth class the past couple seasons. Aged out of that and moved on up a class. Did a great job. Hey guys, could y'all not walk to the finish line for us real quick while we're racing? I ain't gonna call no names, DC, but, but yeah. Dallas Heckley coming off the race line starting gate. I think it's Blake Heckley. Blake Heckley, ho. Oh. I mean, Balake Heckley. The other Heckley. Yeah, it's one of, it's one of those Heckleys. The sassiest heckling. Yeah, I, yeah, I do. I'd say they're both pretty sassy, though. <laughs> like, that's a hard contest. Okay. And I, I would say their mom and dad are both about equally sassy, too. <laughs> so I can't pick one I get it from, you know. You can see those, those small UTVs just absolutely just bouncing through some of those ruts. That's a 37.546 37 37 for Blake. So we had an all girls podium at Winrock. Okay. Interested to see how things shake out today. Our two fastest times on course one were the were Let's the boys. We had Ramsey and Hunter. See how things shake out. Round two. Sadie Ellison out on the course now.
right now we have three drivers with times in thirty and the thirty fives. Wow. Again, really tight times. Again, we see that with the big bouncers too. It's crazy. You know, from youth class to bouncers having such a long course and yet they're still that tight of a time. Three seven point three one four for Sadie Ellison. Again, that's another thirty seven. Looks like Ava Garner on the line now. Ava had a second place finish at Wind Rock a few weeks ago. You <laughs> just sack yelling, <laughs> go, go, go. Again, it's great to see all of our online fans yelling also for the children, cheering them on. It's Thank great. you guys for joining us here on Hillside Live. It's great to see all the parents giving the kids a pep talk. Absolutely. It's like, you can do it, buddy. But to be fair, us bouncer drivers do the same thing to each other. Like, hey, it's, it's fine. You got it. Three, four, point nine, five, four. Everybody needs a pep talk sometimes. They really do. <laughs> it does look like our, our kinda, race line starting gate's just dancing out there. It does kind of look that way. If you guys are just joining us, welcome to the show. You're hanging out with Bree and Matt on Hillside Live. We are at Wildcat Off Road Park in East Bernstadt, Kentucky this weekend for an awesome couple of days of racing. We have completed round one of our UTV Bounty, Bouncer, and UTV Youth classes. We are on round two for UTV Youth right now. We're just a couple drivers away from wrapping that up. And then we'll be moving back into round two for our Bounty and Bouncer classes. Y'all make sure you're watching from that Rock Racing TV Facebook page if you want us to be able to see your comments, answer any questions, and interact with everybody. Come on, Collier. This is Collier Hoback, our youngest racer in the youth class. Apparently, he and his sister Clara have a little track in the yard at home that they get to pr practice on. And when the two of them are out there together, <laughs> you know it's a little different when you uh, can see your yes. competition on the course oh, with yeah. you. Especially when it's your sibling. Forty-five point zero two nine for Collier, but uh, word on the street is he was actually pulling away from his Ooh. sister a little bit the other day. But I think that's where the Clara's aggression comes into play. Then when she can see her yes. target on yes. the course in front of her, I could only get imagine a little those bumper two. cars action, especially after a couple of laps. They both get in the car, feeling warmed up, you know, feeling comfortable. <laughs> I could see them two really going after it. Dallas Heckley on the line now, and then we've uh, just got Hunter Vargo, and that'll wrap up our youth class. Get it, Dallas. She is zooming through there. You can hear you can hear Daniel down there yelling. Go, go, go. <laughs> Three, four point eight eight zero. Miss Dallas Heckley. All right. Ramsey Trainer had the fastest time on course one and it currently has the fastest time on course two. But we've got Hunter Vargo on the line right now. He was our second fastest on course one. Ooh. Let's see if he can get that top spot for round two. Also looks like a, he has a pretty legit wrap over there. Yeah, looking sharp. Last but not least, on the line, Hunter Vargo. There you go. Never 
Just ripping through there. Can what's going to be his time? Oh, 32.922. Man, he was just behind Ramsey. Those two battling it out. Let me give you a quick rundown. Ramsey Trainer took the top spot with a 32.2, and then Hunter Vargo just now with a 32.9. Wow. Let's see what we've got after just that. Just squeaked in right behind him. I mean, tenths of a second difference. Dallas Heckley then with a 34.8. Ava Garner with a 34.9. Wow. Let's Again, get our top five. Let me see who's rounding out top five. That's, it's incredible oh, how oh, close they are. Wait. Wait a second. We've got another 34 in here. Clara Hoback is actually in the third spot with a 34.846. Wow. Then Dallas Heckley with a 34.880. And Ava Garner with that 34.9. Wow. So we had Ramsey, Hunter, Clara, Dallas, and Ava. Those are your top five for round two for the youth class. Heck of a day of racing for our young drivers. Yeah. Well done, everybody. We are going to go to a quick commercial break, and then we'll be right back with all that bounty and bouncer action, so don't go far. What you, what you want, what you, what you want. No matter where your ride takes you. Whether it's a quick trip or a slow climb. Come on. When you choose RCV Performance Axles, you're guaranteed to finish every time. Rebirthed from the depths of Baja, Mickey Thompson Tires announces a new American mud terrain legend. The new Baja Legend MTZ. Silica reinforced T4 tread compound. Power ply three ply construction. Improved four pitch side biters. Proven MTZ tread styling for undisputed traction. 35 different sizes, and one is just waiting for your rig. The Baja Legend MTZ. Mickey Thompson Tires announces a new American mud terrain legend. The new Baja Legend MTZ. 35 different sizes, and one is just waiting for your rig. The Baja Legend MTZ.
What is up, everybody? Welcome back to all the live racing action here going on Wildcat Off Road Park with the National Rock Racing Association. Race number two presented by Mickey Thompson. And today's race is brought to you by SES Gearboxes. Again, you can see that absolutely beautiful drone shot there. Again, showing the crowd, showing the course. Uh, you got the access road there around. Again, just how gnarly some of this course really is. Again, the crowd is definitely packed in here. Beautiful weather today. And we have Bounty Series lining up. We do. And uh, speaking of lining up, I'm going to give you guys a quick rundown of our top five lineup from round one for the UTV Bounty class. Cooper Bentley took the top spot with a 95. Then we had Nathaniel Bell with a 102. Nathan King running for his sister Madison with a 107. Josh Krapinski with a 109. And Robert Trainer with a 121. We also had a few kind of unexpected DNFs on round one for the bounty class. So uh, we had some belt carnage. Yeah. So hopefully we'll see all those guys lining back up and getting another go at it for round two. Who's on the line? Looks like we got Cooper Bentley out there. Again, guy definitely getting his work done today, racing the uh, UTV Bounty and Big Rock Bouncers. Definitely, he's in the starting gate. And crushing it. <laughs> he really is. He's doing very well. I was looking at Justin to see if we can get an OK symbol. I see uh, I see Keith pulling out there, getting our recovery crew already. Again, side-by-side, they're usually a little easier to recover, so you usually take a couple guys, put more bigger bouncers. We pretty much have to have Keith. Thank you, as always, to Keith and all of our recovery volunteers for helping us do what we do here on race days. Safety and recovery is obviously a huge part of a race day out here and a top priority. So we're so grateful for everybody that helps us with that. Thank you to all of our wonderful sponsors for also helping us do what we do here at the NRRA. And, uh, man... It takes a village to do it something really like this, from um, our, our sponsors and recovery to our media people and our fire and EMS teams that we have on site, uh, to our pit teams that keep everything running smoothly and keep the drivers lined up, to our safety, yeah. um, our starting line folks on the line doing that last safety check for all of our drivers. Again, uh, media people, you talk about the media people. We have a lot of cameramen on the hill and camera ladies, you know, eating dust, eating rocks dodging trees as they're whipping by, uh, helping us get those great shots so the viewer at home can really get that absolutely immersive experience. So shout out to all those guys as well as our media people. Uh, I know Addictive Photography is out there. Bub Meadows doing, doing photography for us. we got High Octane Films. We have Mad Rem 11, uh, Busted Knuckle Films, all getting great content, which, you know, Matt, Matt – teased about how he's trying to get that out over the next day so we appreciate that and again it gives all our viewership back home kind of a cool kind of a cool highlight reel so we appreciate them and all that they do for us all right i think we're getting making sure all, speaking of cameras i think we're making sure our cameras are all ready to go making sure our course is clear making sure our uh, recovery crew is ready Matt, do you have any predictions for round two of the bounty class? I, you know what? Any predictions I think I could come up with were dismayed and destroyed by the first round. So, <laughs> I honestly, I don't even know. It's, like, it's, it's total chaos at this point with the bounty series. I mean, Cooper Bentley just needs to lay down a nice smooth run right now. He really does. Again, he came out and kind of set it on fire for that, that fastest time on course one. So... We'll see what he can do here on course two. So right now, sitting on the top of that podium, but uh, again, Cooper's definitely going to try to try to get up there and rip it. But again, they're basically doing the course backwards on the second course. So if you notice, they're not going over to that far right side. Now they're coming over. They're doing some of the hills on the left, and then they'll be doing the wrapping up of that course on the right. All that dirt you see, all those different lanes, choices. Also, Cooper had to go first on both hills uh, wow. for a bounty class because he was a late entry, <laughs> and we always run late entries first uh, when we do odds and evens 
Whoever draws that number one spot, of course, doesn't go first on the second hill because we switched to evens. But if you're a late yes. entry, yes. you stay at the beginning no matter what. So Cooper's just out here showing up, showing everybody the line. Yes. That's what he's doing. As Timmy would say, he's just knocking the leaves off. He's knocking the dust off. Oh. Oh, no. Come on, Cooper. Again, there's so many lanes over there. Again, making sure you're picking a quick lane choice, but as well as making sure you're in the correct lanes, not hitting any flags. Definitely, you want to make sure you're quick over there. Again, pulling with that. So uh, definitely making sure quick work of that, that section there. Again, Cooper Bentley over there just absolutely crushing it right now. See what kind of finishing time he's going to end up with here. 101.114 for Cooper Bentley. We'll see how that time holds up for the rest of round two in the UTV Bounty class. <laughs> the drone taking off. It's like, Sounds like a sewing machine firing up. A sewing machine? Yeah. Do you fire up a lot of sewing machines? <laughs> no, I, I, I have some sewing that gets done from time to time. Uh, I have a new lanyard I just made that's that's uh, teal, the, uh -huh. the same color as the buggy. That way when I go to trade Naturally. shows. Like the PRI show we attended earlier this year. Austin Connell out on the course now. We, uh, for those of you who didn't see me and Bree were at the PRI show, we unveiled the... Uh, National Rock Racing Association's yearly schedule at the event, the Mickey Thompson booth. So that was really cool to be there and see that. Then shout out to Mickey Thompson for helping put that all together. Again, this is a super steep climb with a ledge that you kind of have to like shoot at an angle, right? Oh no! He had the perfect entry. You just have to be able to keep your momentum going there because again, that is such a a crazy ride. Man, that gives you a little appreciation for how Cooper was able to make yeah. this course look pretty easy. Go, baby. There we go. There we go. I think he's up. He's in the trees. Oh, man. Again, that is so steep right there. It really is. If, I know we say it a lot, but you, you guys is. are just going to have to trust us. And if you do not make it, you do not want to be sitting there for long. So, again, mm -hmm. you can see a lot of those guys throwing it in reverse and backing down to kind of kind of pick a better line. Just take your time. Sit there and look at it. That'll help. Zach. Look at it. Honorary man, Zach. When I get to a hill like that, that's what I do. I look at it. <laughs> look at you. Look at it. Oh, my goodness. Honorary man, Zach. I don't think Austin broke anything. No. I think he's definitely trying to come in from that right side. You see there's some of the recovery crew over there checking to make sure he's okay. Oh, we do have the broke. Oh, man. Signal. Oh, Dang another it. Another belt? He has broken his belt. With a whipping like that, I'm not surprised. <laughs> Zach said, with a whipping like that, I surprise. Yeah. And, again, he was putting an absolute beat down on that machine, backing up and really thrashing. Going from that right-hand side uh, to that left-hand side is, is the angle I think you're going to see most guys shoot from today. And definitely putting a beat down on that machine. Unfortunately... Uh, you know, some belts do not last as long as others. <laughs> and, again, it's crazy. As we have seen yes. multiple times so yeah. far today in, in our bounty class. And, again, we've seen guys at Hammers before, you know, that come out and they have they might go a mile or they might go the whole race on the same belt. It's just kind of crazy. And, again, you know, clutches come into play there and weights, and there's so much stuff you can do to kind of get that dialed in. And you want good grip, but you don't want to grip too fast because you can snap it. So, again, there's that kind of fine line, that teeter-totter to make sure you're getting good traction, but at the same time, you know, not breaking a belt. But 
unfortunately, tough luck today. We've seen several drivers in our, in our in the AM. Unfortunately, seven drivers this afternoon that are all having that same issue. But uh, yeah, Cooper Bentley still sitting on the top of that box. It looks like Cooper's rocking the bounty the bounty class today. So I, I would say it's at least going to be on the podium again, just depending on how the the afternoon shakes out right now. Looks like Austin's easing on back down the hill. Yeah, you can see that wing kicking up a little bit there, keeping those banners, keeping those banners flickering. Again, luckily we do have a little bit of breeze today, which helps keep kind of that dust down, especially if you're on the course and you're ripping around. The last thing you want is to be, uh, you know, having to deal with dust. So we do appreciate a little bit of a breeze on the course. Again, and it was a nice, beautiful weather today. We could not really ask for better weather out here. Again, it sounds like uh, Robert Trainer's getting fired up over there. I see Keith coming back down the hill. Okay, that was pretty painless. Next. Cooper just makes this stuff look too easy, in my opinion. All right, I think we've got Austin recovered off the course. Next up, Robert Trainer sitting on go. So his son, Ramsey Trainer is taking home first place in the youth class today. Wow. No pressure, Robert. No, yeah, no pressure. Let's, <laughs> yeah. let's see uh, what the other half of the uh, team trainer yeah. can do out here. Go, go. Go, baby, go. Oh, oh there we go. Hopping right there up. There we go, yeah. Again, for the, for the side-by-sides, side, that is such a massive ledge. Man, that really doesn't look like anything on camera. It's kind of annoying, really. Yeah. Matt and I sit here and watch it, and then we turn around and see in person what it looks like. I'm like, man, yeah. it's, it's not the same. Yeah. No, you could not drive your... <laughs> whatever. Whatever yes. you think you can take up there. Unless you're in a full tilt bouncer, it ain't going to make it. Oh, where'd he go? Man. Oh, no. Dang it. You, you hate to see Another that. Another just random tip over. Yeah, and again, it, it was super soft, too. It wasn't like it was a violent rollover or anything. Again, we've seen that several several times today. Hey, see at least one trainer's taking yeah. home a trophy today. Several course workers get over there and uh, get them flipped back over. Bill, our recovery expert, and I see a couple other guys over there. It does take a few guys. You can't flip it over with one. But um, uh, this is like our fifth, just like little tip over. It really, today. it really is. I mean, and all our bounty driver, and even a couple of our bouncers. Yeah, have just kind of just. Uh, my brother calls it a flop. When I was like, oh, I rolled it over, and he's like, yeah. Don't be, don't be dramatic. It's a flop. I'm it's like, Okay, flop. okay. It's just so, a fainting goat. It is. And only in the off-road community could a guy roll his vehicle over and be like, yeah, dude, don't don't church it up. It's just a flop, all right? <laughs> like, it's not – don't be talking that trash, you know. It's uh, – again, you hate to see that. But luckily it was just a soft roll over soul. Um, you know, hopefully there's no repairs needed. No harm and, done. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Robert does, still doesn't look too happy about it, yeah. though. Understandably. Man, Cooper's uh Cooper's definitely set the bar high today in our UTV bounty class. 
He was the first one out the gate on both courses. He uh, had the fastest time far and away on course one. And so far is the only one to complete course two. Looking like a pretty good day for Cooper so far. Yeah. No, he's he's crushing right now. And, again, I think I think having that competitive edge of driving a, bou- driving a side-by-side on the bouncer course can help you get a better feel for it and really kind of play into driving your bouncer on it later. So I've often wondered if some of the UTV bounty guys – uh, you know, that race bouncers aren't like, hey, this is kind of a great time to test and tune. Again, we've seen that with a lot of our UTV stock drivers yesterday. You know, Jay Storch, Daniel Heckley, you know, uh, Brandon Davis. Some of those guys are racing that. And, again, it's a pretty similar course, so they're getting a good feel for it, getting some getting some seat time and really just feeling if it nothing out. nothing else, they're cementing the course layout yes. in their mind. Yes. Knowing how fast they need to hit some of those hills. Looks like you got to fire it back up. You can see some of that smoke pouring out there. But, luckily, got it back on its own power. And, again... Hopefully it didn't scratch up that uh, purple paint too much. <laughs> Priorities. Did our other bounty drivers all get scared? I don't see anybody at the starting line right now. Can get everybody fixed, figured out down the starting line. Looks like we've had three drivers so far. <laughs> I see the orange paint, the orange 01 on the side. And again, this is Nathan King racing for his sister, Madison King. Nathan had a third place finish on course one. Next up, Nathan King. Let's see if he can get Madison on the podium today. He's, gonna, he's definitely going to try. Madison did race for herself in the cup class yesterday, but she's got a bit of a knee injury right now and didn't want to push it too much. It is her right knee. You know, yeah. that's pretty important foot when you're racing. So It kind of is. Luckily, she's got a very capable brother to stand in for her. Absolutely. Nicely done. Super smooth. There you go. He allowed y'all a really good look at slow motion climbing that hill. Get just trying to get some points for his sister here. Keep her pole position going for the season here. Because our series is based on points, um, those drivers that are committed to the season and um, are in the points chase, you know, to miss even one race, can set you, oh, yeah. you know, really far back and, and uh, make the season, you know, and that can be difficult to come back from. Oh, yeah. So that's why we've got um, a lot of, you know, stand-in drivers or stunt doubles, as we sometimes call them, <laughs> if a driver is not able to race, like Madison today or Cody Kaysen yesterday. Um, they definitely don't want to sacrifice those points if they're committed to the season. Yeah. Nine nine point nine nine eight. That's faster than <laughs> Cooper's time. All right, we've got a new leader. Ninety nine point nine from Nathan King. Cooper uh, now in second with a one oh one. And those are our only two finishers so far. Round two for our UTV Bounty class. Nathaniel Bell is on the line now. He had the second fastest time on course one. He also took home the win from our season opener at Windrock a couple weeks ago. Smooth 
Smooth row gone so far. We got clearly some family here. Friends here <laughs> cheered him on. Woo! Getting a little squirrely up there. I'd say he's on par with Nathan he, and Cooper's runs right now. He is ripping through there. Whoa! Leaping out the top. Can't park there. Oh. Dang it. Had a smoking run going. I'm not going to say that, but I agree. We all see it. Come on, man. Come on, man. I think that's a TC chassis. I believe so. That? I believe so. I actually think I asked him that last time. I think he said it was. Yes, it, yes, it, yes, it. Definitely has that look to it, it and it's got the black and green. Yes. One oh six point six oh six for Nathaniel Bell. Josh Caprent. <laughs> Oh, Josh Kropinski on the line now. I think that's the first time I, yeah. <laughs> I messed it up. <laughs> Get that Jack syndrome. <laughs> I, I hope he wins just because he had to grow up with the last name Kropinski. He deserves a win. And those are giant boulders compared to that side-by-side. -side. Bouncers, they don't look as bad, but when you get a side-by-side -side on top, they look just so huge. And Josh is pulling like an Ironman weekend and doing all three classes of UTV. He raced stock go, and cup baby, yesterday. Go, go. Oh, come there, on. Come on. Hopefully he can cut it back or cut it forth. There we go. There we go. So this is his uh, sixth go at this hillside. <laughs> wow. Yeah, he's definitely, uh, he's in that Brandon Davis, put a beating on your rig type situation. Whoa. Oh. It's fine. That'll buff it's out. all right. It's good. It's yeah. fine. <laughs> Zach, that's fine. It'll buff out. Yeah. Oh, no. Hey, Come on. Like Remember we were talking a little bit earlier about finding your yes. rhythm coming up all these ledges. You don't want to get bellied out like that, and you don't want to be rearing up in the no. way up in the air vertical on all yeah. of them either. So there's definitely um, a, a good balance you've got to yes. find. Again, that perfect balance is very important. We've seen a couple guys just you know, hit a little too hard, a little spicy, and land up top. And it depends so much, uh, you know, the, on your different wheelbase between our UTV and our bouncer classes, and even within the classes, the you know, power and yeah, oh momentum yeah. that you've got rolling into it, how much you're on the gas. There's a pretty good amount of traction out here today too, with how <laughs> it dry is. it is. We've seen that with a couple of the rollovers that we've had. There we go. One two five point three one one for Josh Kropinski. One two five point three one one. DC Thompson on the line. We got DC Thompson to the main stage. Again, I think he unveiled this same chassis two years ago here. Uh, the newer chassis, him and Wade were out playing around with a little bit. Speaking of having a distinctive design in a chassis, DC's is also one of those that yes. you can always recognize. Very iconic. Yeah. 
belt blow on Bill Warren. So he's trying to make up a little time on Bill Warren. See if he can do it. Come on. Again, that side kind of walking that, kind of walking that hill is kind of the best way to do it. And again, just be able to get that front end over once it starts to grab, keep pushing and, and, and definitely working your way up. Uh, great job, DC. Woof. Launching down there. DC was unfortunately one of our DNFs from round one due to a broken belt. So hopefully he can get a finish for himself here. Again, taking his time, checking up a little bit on some of those downhills. Those are big legends for a side-by-side. -side. And those, those drop-offs are pretty, pretty gnarly. Through the finish line he goes. Nice. That's a 120.578 for D.C. Thompson. Nathan King is in the lead still with a 99.9. .9. Then Cooper Bentley with a 101. Nathaniel Bell with a 106 are your top three currently. Casey Howell's on the line. All right, Casey Howell. Let's see what he's got. Slinging it across wow. that ledge. And Casey's run is going to wrap up our UTV bounty class for the day. Straight up the middle. Oh, man. Recalibrate. Head for that left side. Hey, you know what? Sometimes you never know until you try. Yep. You got to test the line a little bit. One oh three point zero zero eight for Casey Howell. Not bad, not bad. Let me let me do some quick math here. Again, we're gonna get our race results here for our UTV bounty series. Nathan King had the fastest time with a ninety nine, and then Cooper Bentley with a one oh one, Casey Howell with a one oh three, Nathaniel Bell with a one oh six. Then we had D.C. Thompson with a 120 and Josh Kropinski with a 125. Wow. Again, a couple DNFs there. Those guys obviously take such a beating with that class. So, again, uh, a shout-out to all of our UTV bounty guys. Now we're moving to our bouncers. So it's going to be a great time. And we'll be back with awesome racing action here at Wildcat Off-Road Park right after these messages. 
these people had one thing in common. You know, they knew they had it in themselves. They knew they could be something beyond where they were. They were willing to put their time, their energies to better themselves. And it's very important to surround yourself with people who are better than you are. You are going to move in the direction of the people you associate with. Look for the people that actually are examples to you. I've never, I've never seen a business, I've seen a lot of businesses, but I've never seen one that delights the customer, that, that doesn't succeed. You long forget about the price, but you never forget when you had a good experience. I will remember how I was treated when I bought it. Rebirthed from the depths of Baja, Mickey Thompson Tires announces a new American mud terrain legend. The new Baja Legend MTZ. Silica reinforced T4 tread compound. Power ply three ply construction. Improved four pitch side biters. Proven MTZ tread styling for undisputed traction. 35 different sizes, and one is just waiting for your rig. The Baja Legend MTZ. What is up, everybody? We are back here at Wildcat Off-Road Park in East Bernstadt, Kentucky for the second race of the National Rock Racing Association. And we have bouncers sitting on the line. It's going to be a great day of racing. We have beautiful weather here. But first, Bree's got some stuff for us. That's right. I was able to catch up with our winner from Windrock, Tammy Cameron. And we caught up with him and got a little interview after our awards at Windrock. So we want to share that with you guys. We're going to head to that interview right now. And then when we come back, we've got all that round two rock bouncer action. All right, guys, we just wrapped up our day of racing here at Windrock Park, the season opener for the NRRA. I'm here with winner of the bouncer class, Tim Cameron. Timmy, you are no stranger to the podium, no stranger to carrying around one of these trophies. What were your thoughts on today's race here at Windrock Park? You know, Windrock's always an awesome, fun place to come race. You know, the elements kind of battled us this weekend a little bit. Of course, it was cra crazy muddy, but hey, sun shining. We got a good Lord above to bless us, so hey, had an awesome time. Uh, I was able to win yesterday in UTV class and take the W today in the bouncer class, so I'm happy and uh, collect a few points because, you know, it's a, it's a long season ahead. Yeah, and more than just a few points because you took the bonus line today as well and you got those extra 13 too. How much do you think that might come into play this season? Hey, you never know. I mean, there's been times there's a few of, a few of the guys we've battled all the way to the end. It comes down to just a few points, so try to try to get what you can when you can. But, uh, yeah, that was cool to have a bonus line. I don't, I don't really remember having many bonus lines in the past to – as an option, you know, so that was a that was a new unique thing Clyde threw in there. Awesome, and again, great interview there, Bree, with uh, Timmy Cameron. Yeah, always fun to catch up with Timmy and um, all of our drivers here at the events. We are ready to move into round two for the RCV Bouncer Cup class. I see Justin Wheels yes. on the line in Matt Holt's own bouncer. That hyperactive rock bouncer, that teal and white wrap looking great. Again, it's going to be a great time. I, I, this is the first time I've actually seen my bouncer go without me in it. So this is a very really? interesting experience. So <laughs> You're kind of having like a – you're having an out-of-buggy experience it right is. now, Matt. I had a 20-year <laughs> reunion a few years ago, and I had to literally – the minute we were done racing, jump in a vehicle and race back to Illinois. So my buddies and my brother were able to load the bouncer and get everything put away. So they got to talk to uh, talk talk about it a little later. You know what it was like to be in the buggy, but uh, definitely a good time. Uh, All right, this is Justin Wheels racing for Matt Holt today, and this is our first bouncer on the second course of the day at our second race of the National Rock Racing Association, brought to you by Mickey Thompson. And today is presented by SCS Gearbox. Now, Matt, you're feeling pretty confident about how the buggy's going to handle yes. these hills today because 
you've you're no stranger to racing here at Wildcat. No, we just again we like I said we raced here last year. I was able to make both of these courses last year, and it was a little wet. So uh, hopefully he can get a finish out of this. Uh, again, every hill has its own features, so everything varies from uh, day to day. So you can even do something one day and the next day not not climb it. So hopefully it'll uh, hopefully get a finish out of it. We'll see. Again, our, our UTV Bounty Series was definitely a mixed bag of, of what happened from rollovers to broken belts today. So yep. it's uh, hard telling what some of the bouncers are going to do. Maybe if you back back down to the pit to get a running start from there. Again, shout out to all our online viewers. Don't laugh. It's not funny. It's a little funny, I admit it. But don't laugh. Man, if he had the rest of the season, That's, uh, again... Uh, backing up, getting a little bit of run out. Again, walking that far right side, kind of coming over, I think is what you're going to see a lot of the bouncer guys do. Come on, Justin. Hammer down. Come on. Ooh. Oh, oh. Whoa. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> getting spicy with there. Again, watching that front end launch up. Again, you're going to see some of the drivers, uh, some of the drivers kind of hit that far right side and kind of ride it over to the left. We had a few. Um, we had a few of the uh, bouncer driver or the side by side UTV drivers do that. So, oh man! Dang it! Oh no! Oh, oh no! Come on. Dang it! Oh man, Matt, what's it feel like to be watching your own buggy roll over? It, it happens. <laughs> It does happen. It does that's happen. for sure. I think uh, I think I heard Clyde say that he broke an axle. So we will uh, we'll get home, tear it apart, and go from there. That, that's about all you can do sometimes. Well, shout out to Justin Wills. Yep. Again, let's, did a great job. Let's check out a little replay uh, presented by Rock Racing TV. It looks like they're flipping over all by hand almost. Again, came down, landed right there. Was still just quite had the art of the momentum going over, over. But uh, unfortunately, it was again. And I thought he could have almost yeah. like backed up out of yeah. that. Again, there's so much going on when you're bouncing, being thrashed from side to side. You're not really sure 100 percent what's going on. So plus, he is in a kind of a tricky spot on it, the hill. It really is. It is. So it doesn't again, look like as much from camera, of course. But you only have about a vehicle wide path up there, so. Uh, kind of figure out what you're doing and, and how, how to do it quickly. Why you're turning over is uh, kind of interesting, but it's a lot to process. Yeah, it is. And again, that hype, that hyperactive rock bouncer did great work. So, shout out to all my sponsors. Mickey Thompson Tires is one of them. So, obviously got great traction today. Unfortunately, sometimes you just don't have enough power. Have a little more power. But uh, Keith, Keith Toolman's going up there. W weren't you going to put a supercharger on? We're working on it. We're oh, working okay. on it. Okay, all right. Working on. Work faster, Matt. Yeah, yeah, I know. Getting my good buddy Justin Wills getting some seat time today. The angry Barney is his buggy. You've typically seen him race. Well, I'm sure he was happy for that, too, because they drove all the way from North Carolina yes, yes. to come and hang out and watch for the weekend. So I bet he had fun getting to kind I'm of sure. unexpectedly get behind yes. the wheel today. Yeah, so he was uh, he enjoyed it. It was a lot of fun. And, again, like I said, Justin Wills, heck of a driver. I'm trying to see what we got in the starting gate over there. I just see the grill. Looks like uh, Billy Holman. All right. Mr. Ho Man. He said, just say it like, ho, like howdy ho. I said, perfect. I, I'm sure that's exactly how it's. I said, I'm <laughs> writing that down, actually. So I literally wrote it down as we were talking and talked about what his buggy was and what it used to be called a little bit. So, uh, again, great to see him out here doing some doing some racing. So uh, it's awesome. Again, I like seeing all of our new drivers come out. We have a couple new bouncers racing with us. A lot of fun. Again, Mark Carpenter's got his new wrap on there. I'm pretty excited about it. We've got a couple um, not new faces, but ones that we haven't seen around in a little bit as well coming back out today. So good time here at Wildcat Off-Road Park this weekend. While we've got a little bit of a break in the action right now, let's go ahead and do a rundown of our top five in the RCB Bouncer Cup class from course one. Timmy Cameron had the fastest time with an 89. Then we had Daniel Heckley with a 98.0, Nick Reich with a 98.3, and Cooper Bentley with a 98.6. Wow. 
And then we had Clint Garrison with a 104 rounding out the top five from course one. Timmy with that 89. I mean, just came out with that new buggy. And, I mean, I, I tell you, it's like just a really souped-up side-by-side. Just smoked this course. Again, setting a quick time. And he was one of our early runners uh, right, yeah. out, right out the gate. So, yep. again, he has a little more, you know, being one of those odd numbers, he has a little bit longer draw. So he can kind of sit back, watch what people are doing, watch how the course develops. So that's super huge. Uh, and as it kind of develops, they can go from there and see see what's happening and, you know, figure that out. So, uh, Who turned on the, I know. the wind special little, effects? A little, little debris <laughs> here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We got a special appearance from this caution tape behind us. Yeah. <laughs> Keep showing up. But uh, definitely an awesome day of race and action going again. Great weather here at Wildcat Off-Road Park for the second we, race. We are enjoying a beautiful sunny weekend. Definitely a nice change after all the mud that we raced in at Windrock for our season opener. Um, turning out to be a beautiful Easter weekend here for round two of the National Rock Racing Association presented by Mickey Thompson. And this weekend brought to us by SCS Gearbox. So huge thank you to those guys and all of our sponsors for helping us do what we do. We are going to step out for a quick commercial break, and then we'll be right back with more of that RCV Bouncer Cup action. What you, what you want, what you, what you want. No matter where your ride takes you. Whether it's a quick trip or a slow climb. Come on. When you choose RCV Performance Axles, you're guaranteed to finish every time. These people had one thing in common. You know, they knew they had it in themselves. They knew they could be something beyond where they were. They were willing to put their time, their energies to better themselves. And it's very important to surround yourself with people who are the better than you are. You are going to move in the direction of the people you associate with. Look for the people that actually are examples to you. I've never, I've never seen a business, and I've seen a lot of businesses, but I've never seen one that delights the customer, that, that doesn't succeed. You long forget about the price, but you never forget whether you had a good experience. I will remember how I was treated when I bought it. Rebirthed from the depths of Baja, Mickey Thompson Tires announces a new American mud terrain legend. The new Baja Legend MTZ. Silica reinforced T4 tread compound. Power ply three ply construction. 
Improved four pitch side biters. Proven MTZ tread styling for undisputed traction. 35 different sizes, and one is just waiting for your rig. The Baja Legend MTZ. Mickey Thompson Premium Mud Terrain is on the road and full of undisputed attitude. The Baja Boss MT. No compromises, ever. We are purpose-built tires for truck and Jeep enthusiasts everywhere. All mud tires are not created equal. And here's the proof. Powerfly XD construction, asymmetrical tread design, extreme side biters, and more. Find your tire size today at MickeyThompsonTires.com. Welcome back to the RCV Bouncer Cup Class Round 2. We have completed our recovery and are ready to keep things rocking and rolling out here at Wildcat Off-Road Park. Thank you guys for joining us here on Hillside Live. You're hanging out with Bree and Matt for Round 2 of the NRRA presented by Mickey Thompson. This weekend brought to us by SCS Gearbox. We've got Billy Homan on the line. He has been waiting patiently patiently to unleash the old Benny boy buddy yep. on the hill and he is set to kill right now he's ready to go he's excited I would like to know the story behind the name of this book yeah I should have asked yeah. him old Benny boy oh, 
I like his panels, how they're all, like, you know, kind of cool riveted or uh, kind of cool, like, the nut cap bolts there. Looks pretty sharp. are already going much better for Billy so far from uh, round one. Wow. That motor can sing, baby. Listen to it. Yeah, that motor was... Absolutely singing. Go, baby, go. This is only Billy's second race ever. Wow. His first race was with us at Winrock for the season opener. And that's a tough first race to, you know, get your feet yeah. wet and yeah. rock racing with. So glad to see him back out here with us again. Well, Shirley's watching with us. You can see uh, we may have a very difficult day on our hands. Again, we saw some of the side-by-sides kind of skip through it. Um, again, bouncers do weigh a lot more than some of the side-by-sides, so maybe they uh, maybe we see some more issues with the bouncers. We'll, we'll keep you guys posted and let you know. Not sure what the issue is on the hill right now for Billy. Got our recovery crew checking on him. It sounds like he has either the buggy cut off or he cut it off. At any rate, it's not running. Yeah. movement. Yeah. Where is everybody watching from today? All our folks joining us on Hillside Live. Y'all having a nice sunny spring weekend like we are here at Wildcat. Yeah, you really couldn't ask for beautiful weather, Bree. Our recruitment crew, I think, is wondering if they're going to be needed or not. I see uh, Keith tooling up there. You can see him pulling up, but I think he's hesitant because he's not sure if they're going to need him or not. We'll see. I think uh, Zach was saying they might have broke a drive shaft. And that's a great, great, cool shot of the top of uh, Keith Tulin's rig there. Appreciate all he does for us racers. Taylor, do you have that uh, Tim Cameron interview queued up still? Timmy was our winner from the season opener at Windrock, and he is sitting in first right now from round one for the RCB Bouncer Cup class. So for those of you that missed this interview, this was a post-race interview from Windrock. Uh, let's go ahead and throw that up here while we are getting Billy Homan recovered off the hill. 
All right, guys, we just wrapped up our day of racing here at Windrock Park, the season opener for the NRRA. I'm here with winner of the bouncer class, Tim Cameron. Timmy, you are no stranger to the podium, no stranger to carrying around one of these trophies. What were your thoughts on today's race here at Windrock Park? You know, Windrock's always an awesome, fun place to come race. You know, the elements kind of battled us this weekend a little bit. Of course, it was cra crazy muddy, but hey, sun shining. We got a good Lord above to bless us, so hey, had an awesome time. Uh, I was able to win yesterday in UTV class and take the W today in the bouncer class, so I'm happy and uh, collect a few points because you know it's a, it's a long season ahead. Yeah, and more than just a few points because you took the bonus line today as well, and you got those extra 13 too. How much do you think that might come into play this season? Hey, you never know. I mean, there's been times there's a few of a few of the guys we've battled all the way to the end. It comes down to just a few points, so try to you try to get what you can when you can. But uh, yeah, that was cool to have a bonus line. I don't, I don't really remember having many bonus lines in the past. To, as an option, you know, so that was a that was a new unique thing Clyde threw in there. All right, and speaking of interviews, we got Justin Wills up here in the booth with us. Yes, sir. How's it going? What's up? Normally, we see you in that Digger Deep in Racing wrap, pink, purple, big bouncer, but your motor is not quite together yet. Today, you had to switch colors to <laughs> teal. Yeah. Well, I looked How on does it that. Feel? I, it, it wasn't too bad, you know. I looked on that wrap, and I seen just a little bit of pink on there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. For me. <laughs> Trying he to must have knew I was going to drive it today. <laughs> We have some of that 90s theme going with, again, obviously, Digging Deeper f yep. falls right in there with us. Yeah. I so, Justin, you guys came out here just to hang out and watch this yeah. weekend, and you ended up running for Matt today. Yeah. What was that experience like? Yeah. Well, you know, I stepped out my comfort zone, you know, <laughs> and tried to get in something that was a little a little more more of a handful. So. Yeah. 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 You know, we done pretty good on the first rowdy. deal. You know, just kept that momentum going. And yeah. And made it out the top. Yeah, I like it. Looking good. So, so what happened on Hill Two? Did you break a axle? I think I think it did on that on that. If you was watching that recovery action when I kept backing and hitting that reverse, it was going pretty good. And then when I just, I was like, you know what, we're gonna make it. I slammed her down there and gave her all she had. <laughs> she was about to go out the top, and then I, I felt it something happened and just. And there wasn't enough reverse there. There, it really is. And again, you have so much happening, and there's only like a one vehicle path wide there. Yeah. 
you have so much going on. It's you know you can't do. Do I turn and drive out of it? Do I slap it back, reverse? And by that time you're already on the side, so it's not really much you can do about it. Yeah. Well, Matt said there's nothing that you could do to the buggy that he hasn't already <laughs> done to it. It's true. So yeah. He was he was excited for you to be able to drive for him well, today well, and have the stunt the double. Yeah, 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 yeah. I said there's nothing he can't break on that that I haven't already broken. So yeah. I told him he was having an out of buggy experience. Yeah, today. It was. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sitting up here watching his rock bouncer on the hill. So, so Matt, how did it feel when weird. you watched that it's buggy? So weird. Almost make it. And you're like, oh. oh no, I, it was just weird seeing the buggy without me in it. Just because I've, I've had a couple buddies that unload it from trailers and stuff, but seeing the buggy going without me in it was definitely an experience. Uh, I do kind of like watching it. You know, it's kind of weird yeah. seeing seeing it going around. Definitely like, like an out of body experience watching gotcha. it. But gotcha. I was cheering you on. You know, showing some love. But well, that's good. Well, I appreciate it. And you got some other cool racing stuff happening later this year, right? Yeah, yeah. So uh, we're going into the Pro Four. Uh, we actually headed to Ohio to finish putting the truck together. Uh, next week we'll uh, dyno it, and then uh, we'll start doing some testing. And May eighteenth. We'll be racing in Lena, Wisconsin. Okay. So, and then of course uh, Gatlin and and little Brody, they're they're racing the little outlaw cars at okay. Millbridge. Yeah. So they're getting some racing every other Tuesday. So okay. That's close to home. I've seen some pictures posted. Yeah. Looks kind of cool. Yeah, they're doing pretty good. What's Gatlin thinking of that? She's one of our youth drivers that, that well, used to race know, with us. Gatlin's the mouth of the south, and <laughs> she don't know anybody at that track, and so she's having a. A little bit of a problem with that because yeah. she likes to be in the environment and talking and chatting and everything else. So, you know, she she's got to learn uh, learn a bit of the racing. It's a little bit different, you know. It's a circle track, dirt track, and um, she will get a hang of it. Brody's doing pretty good, you know. He's he's pedaled to the middle all oh, the yeah. time. So oh yeah, <laughs> he's done got two second place finishes. So it's a matter wow. of time before he gets on yeah. the, on the top box. And being that it's circle track you only get credit if you're in victory lane really yes. yeah he's always waiting around to go get on the podium and <laughs> yeah. yeah there's no podium no. For, first, yeah. for second place no. so. but he's doing great they're both doing great well That's good awesome. glad to hear what you guys have been up yeah. to glad to see you back out here this weekend yeah yeah it's, it's it at the end of the day it's always fun watching as a as a spectator because you're rooting everybody on when you're <laughs> yeah. a racer you're you want everybody to do good, but you're like, oh, just, just <laughs> mess up good. the air. Leave a little <laughs> bit on the table. Leave a little bit on the table. Let me get them. But it's a whole lot better when there's there's not that pressure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. It's yeah. a little different sitting on sitting on sidelines and watching. Yeah. Yeah. Again, it's uh, awesome to see you out there. And, again, like I said, it, we're excited for some of the stuff you got going on. I, I, I try to follow you on the social media, so it's yeah. kind of cool, some of the stuff you're doing. And you guys were at Hammers as well? Yeah. Yeah, we was there. Yeah, <laughs> we got a forty. No we raced. We raced. Forty eight hundred car, right? We entered. We yeah, ran. yeah. We didn't make it too far. Yeah, but I you know, we made it like a nineteen mile. Nineteen. Oh 19 man! Miles. But again, you raced a forty eight hundred car. Forty eight hundred car. Yep. Uh, difference for those that don't know, the big dogs forty four hundred uh, and forty eight hundred. Only difference is, is you only run one shot per corner. Yeah. Versus the bypasses and all that stuff. Yeah. Anything else goes. Was that your first experience at KOH? Uh, second. Second. We ran when they used to do shootout. We ran there. Right. And then uh, 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 we was in the 4600 two years ago. Yeah. Stock class. And you've done very well at uh, Kentucky, I think, right? Or Tennessee. Tear down in Tennessee you raced that before. Yeah, we got a second place in the, uh, the stock 4600. That Gatlin ran in the Dean class last year. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. Definitely be on the podium. You know, it never hurts, right? No. Always, you know, I like it's to always say, a good experience. If yeah. you don't make the podium, at least you got to look good doing it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and again, it's usually well, iconic. You do that. I like the new players yeah. here. Yeah. Yeah. No, matter, no matter what he's driving, it's usually wrapped in pink. Pink, yeah. maybe a tash of purple on there. Yeah, always. <laughs> I see. I see even your UTV now has some pink and purple wraps on yeah. it. Yeah. You know? uh, saw that. Our uh, pit vehicles, our Groms, everything's matching, uh, which will go with the color scheme of the Pro Ford truck. Okay. Uh, and it'll have the same kind of look to it. So. Well, yeah. we can always find you guys in a crowd. Oh, <laughs> you always. can. Yep. You can. Whether it be a racetrack, PRI, it yep. definitely sticks out with that neon pink hoodie there. Yeah. Well, Justin, thanks for coming up and chatting yep. with us. Do you have anything else that you would like everyone to know? Anyone you want to thank? 
Oh, uh, thank you, Matt Holt Racing, for the features <laughs> today. Um, I'd have to look at the side of his buggy yeah. to know. <laughs> who, who all would you like to know? High Society Off Road, of course. High that's, that's my shop, yep. uh, which I don't really talk about that much, hardly ever. Uh, obviously, Even though it's a huge, capable shop. Yeah, it is. It shop. is. Raceline, uh, obviously, Mickey Thompson out there, uh, Icebox Performance, 300 to below. Uh, I'm trying to remember all the ones that so Warren Winch, ADS Shocks. Apex Raps, Stein Jaeger Performance, uh, definitely a lot of those guys really helped me keep going. On it. And I, most of my sponsors have been with me for quite a while, so we have a great relationship. We work with each other. You know, we, we do a lot of stuff together. Yeah. So And digging deeper racing. And digging deeper That's racing. Right. So. Heck, yeah. I'm glad you had to race you. That worked out well today. I know. Yeah. Do what? Digging deeper racing, yeah? Cost, yeah. Cost too much. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I, I love. One. I got some little ones. Yeah, little ones, a little sticker on there. Yeah, the entry level sponsorship. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Tons uh, of fun. Yeah, it's a good time. Well, thanks Appreciate for coming up to chat, Justin. It's good to see you out here this weekend. Yeah. It was definitely fun watching you out there racing the hyperactive buggy. And uh, it was fun watching Matt watch you race, oh, too. Yeah. I enjoyed all that. <laughs> all um, right. We're going to step away for a quick commercial break, and we'll be right back with more bouncer action after this. Rebirth from the depths of Baja. Mickey Thompson Tires announces a new American mud terrain legend. The new Baja Legend MTZ. Silica reinforced T4 tread compound. Power ply three ply construction. Improved four pitch side biters. Proven MTZ tread styling for undisputed traction. 35 different sizes and one is just waiting for your rig. The Baja Legend MTZ. Rebirthed from the depths of Baja, Mickey Thompson Tires announces a new American mud terrain legend. The new Baja Legend MTZ. Silica reinforced T4 tread compound. Power ply three ply construction. Improved four pitch side biters. Proven MTZ tread styling for undisputed traction. 35 different sizes and one is just waiting for your rig. The Baja Legend MTZ. axles, you're guaranteed to finish every time.
Mickey Thompson Tires announces a new American mud terrain legend. The new Baja Legend MTZ. 35 different sizes, and one is just waiting for your rig. The Baja Legend MTZ. All right, guys, welcome back to round two of the Mickey Thompson NRRA. This weekend presented by SCS Gearbox. We're still working on a little recovery up on the hill, so we snagged Cooper Bentley to come up here and chat with us. Cooper, you got second place in the bouncer class at Winrock for the season opener, and you laid down a heck of a run both hills in our UTV bounty class today. So how are you feeling about things overall coming into this weekend from Winrock and then yesterday, today? You've, you've run the whole gamut of racing pretty much so far. So tell us what your thoughts are here at Wildcat. Well, the bounty, you know, it was fun. I had two good runs, but it was pretty rough. Yeah. <laughs> I, I took a good look like, right there. And uh, we're just – I'm not really going for the uh, for the points but for the whole season of the bounty. So I'm just racing this just to get some more seat time because I put some more power to the buggy. So uh, we trying to get some more seat time. You and got uh, fir first place on hill one. Oh, the wind just messed me up here. <laughs> and uh, you got second place hill two. Pretty solid. Definitely a great day. Who got me, Nathan? Uh, yep. Yeah. He was he was on a terror yep. too. Not yep. by much. Technically, Madison. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you can't beat by a girl. Oh yeah, it's happened before. <laughs> it's happened. <all> time. <laughs> he said it's happened. <laughs> That's before. something new. So, what are your feels going into the second course with bouncers? Well, you know, I'm going for the season in the bouncer, so it's a lot more to think about. It is. <laughs> Can't just go wide open every run. But when you're racing against people like Timmy and yeah, Mike and Brandon and all them, you've got to go wide open. You really do. And again, that does, they don't leave much on the table. Oh, you no. know, you know, Definitely you know. Not. Again, trying to be consistent, but be fast. Again, knowing kind of where to gamble and where not to is kind of the name of the game, really. You oh, know. Yeah. Do you know the times? I know we From, all got Did you know how tight you are with second and third place? Oh, yeah. So, Timmy had an 89. Daniel Heckley had a 98.0. Nick Reich had a 98.3. You had a 98.6. That's how wow. tight you guys all were round one for the bouncer class. Oh, yeah. That's pretty crazy. Well, <laughs> two, two and four, or two through four is pretty tight, but Timmy kind of smoked us on that one. Yeah, we're not talking about that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we can... Close that gap a little bit. This yeah. Day. There you go. That's your goal for round two. All wow. right. We got Mr. Brandon Davis sitting in the starting line, our current season champion of that IFS buggy. Sitting there on that race line starting gate. All right, Definitely Cooper. Definitely getting ready. Thanks for coming up and chatting with us. Good luck yes, on round two. Thank you. All right. We got that recovery completed. Brandon Davis is ready to hit these hills. Old Menace sounded fierce. It is. Absolutely ripping out there at the starting gate. Can see what Brandon's approach is. Again, he's an IFS buggy. Launching right up there. So that front end was able to just kind of soak it up. Maybe a lot better than some of the straight axle guys are out here racing. So, again, we've seen weird, a couple of weird different mechanical failures so far today. Whoa, no, no, no. Oh, oh. Landed. See if he can get back on his wheels. Oh, oh, man. Dang it. That was a wild, wild ride. Taylor, do we have a replay? Woo, that was something. That was a wild, wild ride. I did not expect to see that from Brandon yeah. today. We got the thumbs up. He's good. He definitely got himself a skinny pedal nomination. Yeah, that was wow. Let's go check out that replay presented by Rock Racing TV. Man, just a... Donkey kick done, gone wrong, and he didn't have enough room there to drive out of it. Yeah, talk about a replay. Come on, fellas. 
get their workout for the day. Look at them go. We are three drivers in to round two of the RCB Bouncer Cup class, and we are also <laughs> three DNFs. Wow, yes. Oh, my goodness. That was a wild, wild ride if, again. If y'all will notice, at least half the folks up there right now are drivers. You can see by their fire suit. All running up to help, to check on Brandon, to get the buggy rolled back over. That's the kind of camaraderie that we brag on in this sport and what makes it so special. I mean, uh, there's a lot of sports and hobbies in the world that one could participate in. But what we really think makes makes this series and this sport so special is just the camaraderie, that family feeling when you're out here. They're all competing against each other, but every single one of them wouldn't hesitate to run out there and yeah. help in any way that they could as well because these are the, these are your buddies. Yeah. Your buddies you're racing against. Again, great point. I, I couldn't agree more. Again, I think that front end might have just soaked up too much and, again, put him almost uh, inverted, you know, and, again, just uh, – wasn't able to pull it back out, caught that tree, and just able to. I really thought he was coming back over onto all fours and was going to be able to recover it, but it looks like he unfortunately was not. Well, he's got a crack team of uh, yeah. engineers checking it all out right yeah. now. Let's check out the replay one more time and see if we can tell what happened here. Unfortunately, he's caught the tree. And right here, I thought back tire blue. Wow. That back tire blew out, and I think that's what caused him. It was him. a rough landing. You know, when, when that, I think if that black back tire would have held, he might have been able to just throw it in reverse, come back out. But, again, when that back tire blew, it kind of dug in, and unfortunately just kind of kind of spun him a little bit. I think that front and right corner, what did he? Dug in really hard. There. It looks like something broke. Uh, may, yeah, yeah, maybe. Right, right here when he comes down on it. Still was, again, right there, that rear tire. You can see that dirt just blow out with that that left rear tire. Man. Again, You know, this is, this is what we see when these guys are racing and their times are so tight out here and they're just pushing each other to the limit of what uh, the vehicles can do to their own driving abilities. Getting to that back tire flat. Literally blew it off the beadlock. Wow. And even some of our most consistent drivers, and we literally call Brandon Mr. Consistency. Yeah. You know, you got to push so hard and something like this, you might see it happen. Glad Brandon's okay. Looks like no major damage to the buggy from here at least. All that safety equipment doing its job. Yeah. We require all of our drivers to wear a uh, fire suit. Hans device, full face helmets, uh, either window nets or wrist restraints in the buggy to make sure that your all arms stay inside the vehicle at all times. We require fire extinguishers and fire suppression systems. And when you are pushing these vehicles to the extremes like we do in the bouncer class, in all our classes really, um, that's why all those safety requirements have to be top priority. Yeah. And, again, just, you know, like you said, keeping them safe is, you know, obviously you want to come out here and go fast and have fun. Uh, but, you know, keeping us safe is the biggest priority. And, uh, you know, that is a good point, Reed. Looks like he's hopping out of there. I think Cheryl must be up there having a chat. You can see some of our uh, safety guys checking out the vehicle. Probably get a spare tire and bring it over here. Mark Carpenter on the line now. Here we go. Did Mark Carpenter had a kind of a wild first run? Got that new wrap on there.
come on. Nice. <laughs> yeah. Checking all our crews out there. Mark did unfortunately have a DNF on round one. Would love to see a finish for him here on round two. Got that bipolar buggy yeah. looking pretty sharp. Yeah, looking good. That new wrap looks really sharp on there. Okay, Mark's been racing for a little while. Uh, definitely had a wild ride at West Virginia last year. Oh! Uh, oh. <laughs> try, try There's that vertical we've yeah. been talking about. Again, like to try not to go inverted there. Wow. You can definitely hear the horsepower from, the, from that thing. That looks like a... Uh, is that a busted knuckle chassis? I believe so. Definitely the motor sounds great in it. Ooh. Ooh. Getting a little squirrely up there on those uphill sections. Mark also raced with us yesterday in the UTV Cup class. There we go. All right, our first time of the day. We finally got one. One five six point five six zero for Mark Carpenter. We've got Clayton Smith on the line now, and Clayton Smith is taking home at least one trophy this weekend, and that is the Skinny Pedal Award that he won from the race at Windrock. We posted that, and you guys voted, and Clayton was the winner. He's going to be taking home a pretty cool uh, trophy. Is trophy the right word for it, Matt? <laughs> you know, I don't know. I don't know what you'd call it. Uh, we'll just call it an award. Medallion? <laughs> you guys will get to see that. Man, later when we do podium. He is ripping out of that race line starting gate. Walking the old gold rush reclaimed right Heck up that yeah. ledge. Oh, there we go. <laughs> Again, what a wild ride. see that ledge in the middle there has gotten dug out. Yeah. Uh, we ran, of course, our UTD Bounty class on the same course as the bouncers today. So there's been a lot of tires out on this course, on this hill. And with the um, loose dirt, it's starting to get a little bit undercut. We're seeing a little more, I guess, a little more struggle on it, having to back up and get lined up and uh, it's throwing everybody straight up in the air. There it is. Great 
finish. Okay, now it's time. 117.065. Not bad, not Smith. bad. Getting right behind Mr. Clayton Smith is the other half of that Reclaim Racing team. Dan Bowman is on the line. And Dan was on the podium at Windrock. He took on third place in the bouncer class. Super awesome to see. Both Clayton and Dan, uh, we can definitely tell, have put in the time and got that seat time and gotten more comfortable in their buggies over the past season. I think we can. And it definitely yes, shows. Yes, we can definitely see they've gotten more comfortable as Dan rips off the starting line. Like it, it's awesome. Brandon's down here. Brandon's down here and uh, just watching Bowman just rip through there, rip through that course, just enjoying watching other racers there. All right, out the top he goes. Make a quick work of that uphill section. Now you know all the drivers. Whoa, so, no! Oh, right it out. Right it out. <laughs> wow. Wow. <laughs> wow. Well played, Mr. Dan Bowman. Oh, man. These guys are just getting wicked with it. You know they all saw what happened to Brandon. Yeah. Jeez, so Louise. I thought they might cause them to check up a little yeah. more, but oh no. <laughs> I thought the same oh thing. No. I thought we'd see a lot more reservations coming into that jump. That was a full sin. It <laughs> and he didn't have a choice, really, though. It he really had didn't. to ride that out or yeah. roll over. Yeah, that was definitely a full maximum sin. Dan Bowman already got himself a skinny pedal nominee because of his rollover and recovery and finish on round one for the bouncer class. Yeah, he already wow. had one wild ride today. Look at Dan. What an awesome run. What? 117.300. Clayton Smith just got a 117.065. <laughs> wow. I mean, literally three tenths of a second separating those guys. And I think I, I, Colby's up in the line. I, again, I don't, I don't, at this point, I don't even know what to expect. These guys are We're absolutely. just taking it as it comes right now. They're just sending it right now. All right, we got a replay here brought to you by Rock Racing TV. Again, landed, and you can see him coming over. He still stayed in the gas right there, was able just to keep it Good right up. he did. And, man, that had to have been a wild ride. Yeah. Hey. So Brandon definitely had a little more of a lawn dart. And by the time he came down, he was headed straight into the trees. Didn't have really have any of the Luckily for Daniel, he was able to. Colby Reich, let's see if he can lay down a nice smooth run now or if we're going to be getting any other wild runs to replay. There's no telling with these guys today. All right, we got Colby Reich here again, watching these uphill and downhill sections. Try to keep a great eye on our drone work here. Again, we've seen some guys have problems. We've seen some guys make it. Had a few DNFs early and was able to uh, last few guys get it lined up. This downhill section, man, Bowman just wild man was able to keep it on all fours, driving crazy. We'll see what Colby does. Oh, Colby. Colby. <laughs> A little, little bit more calm approach than Bowman. Bowman, oh, flat tire. Isn't that his second flat tire today? Yeah. 
Again, luckily, the hard part, I think, is where, again, those rock ledges and dirt ledges aren't too, too much of a task. He's trying to get it all lined up there. We've got Brandon Davis up here with us to chat about his run. Um, I, we want to hear your thoughts after we watch Colby here. What do you think about Colby's odds now that he's got this front tire <laughs> completely flat? I've had three flats this weekend, so oh, it, is, it's hard, <laughs> it is hard to steer with flats. There's it a is. a lot of rocks out here. Nah, yep. Again, I was trying to see if he bent a rim. A lot of times you can see guys say it land like hard, like my taco the rim in on the inside or the outside. Oh, yep. uh, it looks like you pulled it completely off the outer bead. I mean, it's... It's definitely, definitely a heck of a wild wide. Yep. What was it like being in the cab for that? It rock, rocked my world a little <laughs> bit. <laughs> Hit the back of my head on something. I don't know. I guess oh, the back man. of the seat. Yeah. I mean. But that was a rough land. That was, was a, it was pretty violent. Would you like to see a replay? Yeah. I, I, somebody showed me the replay, but <laughs> it. Uh, Taylor, can yes. we pull up the replay real quick? Again, right here you landed. Yeah, and it so those back tires caught the edge, the lip of the rock. Yeah. And right here, yep. landed, you can see that back tire just blow out. So that's where my head got yeah. slammed into the back and it, of the And seat. when it blew out, it dug in hard and yep. just kind of kind of rolled over. So it, it looks like so Col Colby's Colby, still attempting the hill. Yeah, Colby pulled up to Justin, and he thought he had broke his steering. So he went like this, and Justin ran up and looked at it and said, no, you just have a flat tire. And he said, all right, get back out of the way. Kind of got back on the course where he left, and uh, I think as wild as that throttle is being wrapped right now, I think he's trying yep. to get get through there. Yep. Again, we thought we'd see guys after you. Oh, Colby! Come oh, on! No. Oh. Wow! This pace is not being good to folks this it, weekend. It is, is not. It? Again, we and it's all been like kind of weird, kind of crazy it stuff. It's I not. Agree. It's not one certain ledge or, yeah. or one certain area. It's and this is not that difficult. It really isn't. That's we what would, we were thinking <laughs> during the bounty earlier. I was like, this is really hard. not that yeah, hard yeah. of a course, especially we, from what we, we saw make it with hard. Rock. Yes, <laughs> we and make it hard. And we were saying this is kind of a, a medium sin this weekend, but then yeah. you throw the word race in there, and yeah. obviously you see guys on their lids, you see yeah. guys rolling over, and again, you took a, a wild ride there. That back tire blew out and it kind of dug in, and there wasn't, yeah. I think, much saving at that yeah. point, but... Yeah. Again, when it digs in that hard, yep. you know, it's not like you can do much. But again, at that point, we really thought we you had it saved up until then. Yep, yep. Yeah, I got I stabbed the gas when it, you know. Yep, we saw it. You can see the front tires it's kicking, and kicking up, that and that's point. all you can do. Yep, that's all you can do. Is Let's watch a quick replay of Colby again. Launch up a little donkey kick right there. Yep, just and just barely left over. Wow, man, not, not much to do about that one either. Wow. No, you're long for the ride. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. There's no change in that. Well, you know what, Brandon? You did get a skinny pedal nomination out of this. <laughs> yeah, weekend, yeah. So Thank let you. that be your consolation. Yeah, I'll get, I'll get another one. <laughs> like a, it's been a couple years since I've got one. So yeah. <laughs> did you get one the first season? Yeah. We did in it? the Can Am. The oh little, yeah. The oh little, yeah. The little Can Am got Springs. one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The little Can Am got one. So. Did you see the skinny pedal trophies yet? For Not this for this year. Uh, oh my goodness. Oh man. Hey Taylor. Yeah. Oh, okay. They're they're very interesting. It's uh, it's Shepard does a great job. He's he does, so creative. So he's is. he's made them totally different um, each year for us. So this is what our skinny pedal awards look like this season. It, it's a chain with uh, <laughs> this is your medallion on there. And again, oh, talk talk about an epic trophy. Wow. I mean, <laughs> that's awesome. That is just a, a super yeah, cool trophy. Again, that's got cool. uh, definitely had them powder coated, and obviously that's. That's just slick. That's we it. do fully expect He's everybody that wins one of these to wear it yes, on absolutely. the podium. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. Post a picture in front of the buggy with yeah. it, like, lay it upside That's down. That's cool. He came up so, with So, again, like that. very, very cool trophy. Again, I'll have the chain on there, and I, I think we definitely will see some yeah. guys repping Mine's those. the American flag that he yeah. had. Yeah, yep. Yep. that one was there. I mean, they're all cool. Yeah, he does neat. a great job with them. Shout out to Jonathan yeah, Shepard and Skinny Pedal Fab absolutely. for um, partnering with us on this award. We've had a lot of fun with it over the past couple years yeah. and putting those videos together. And hopefully you guys are having fun getting to watch and vote on them yeah. as well. So Clayton Smith's going to be taking home this one uh, from his wild ride at Windrock. Cool. Yeah, I would times. say not right now. You're probably leading the uh, leading the. <laughs> <laughs> you too might be the lucky it's, winner. It's, it's that's not, not a good thing. <laughs> it's not a. That's not an award you want to win. No, it's cool to win not it. Not a good thing. But it's not something you want to win. Mm -mm. You know. Mm -mm. You know, it's not something you want no. going to the win. Uh, obviously, you're an IFS buggy, and we have a lot of straight axle guys out here. 
How does the IFS play in different with this tile, of course, than the straight axle? It, it should have done good out here. That was all driver error. I feel uh, like on the front on the first course going up all those rock ledges, it seemed like it was it, soaking it right does. up. It does. It stuck to the hill. And I had too, too low a tire pressure on the first course, and you know popped a tire, and you know you could just can't control it. And that puts you into a flag, and it's just kind of downhill yeah. from there. So, uh, just not a good weekend. That's racing, though. It, it really is. Know? Again, we were talking about that. from it. Even on a, a, a medium difficulty course, when you throw that race word in there, yep. things can kind of go out the window. Yeah. <laughs> That's <laughs> right. Again, and once you're hurling through the air, you're just doing everything you can as fast as you can. And, again, you, those milliseconds become hours, and hours become milliseconds. Trying oh, yeah. To, trying to get things going as you're flying through the air and rolling. And yep. I really thought you were going to be able to put it back on all four tires right at the very end. But yep. Unfortunately, that's kind of the brakes racing. Yep, yep. I thought it was. I felt it, <laughs> I felt it try and come out, yeah. and it just flopped. So. Oh, man. <laughs> it tried. Again, having a real low center of gravity and having a wide, long, low center of gravity, again, yep. not wanting to flip back over once it kind of gets upside down. Yep. But yep. Uh, definitely uh, definitely a, a tough break race. And, again, you are a current season champion for the 2023 rock racing season. So Now i got a lot of work to do. Yeah, you got a lot of work to do. <laughs> and, again, it's a long season. This is only the second race. Yeah. So we yep. have, you know, eight more races. And, again, at finals, we're on four courses. So yep. there's a lot of racing going on true. this season. Very and, again, true. we've seen, you know, all kinds of things. We went to um, Rush Springs or Hollywood. We've uh, we've had all kinds of interesting things happen there. And the leaderboard totally changed. Yep. So, yeah. Well, Brandon, thanks for coming up and Thank chatting you. with us. We always love hearing from you. You got anything else you want to say? I don't think so. I'm going to go take some Advil. <laughs> <laughs> you have a well-deserved break now. <laughs> Thank you. See you all. See you guys. All right, Richard Hodges is off the line. We've got a couple requests for our rundown so far. Clayton Smith had a 117.065. Then Dan Bowman with a 117.300. And Mark Carpenter with a 156.560. Let's see what Richard Hodges can do. Go, baby, go. Again, Richard Hodges was able to get his buggy put back together and get those new axle shafts put in the rear. And obviously, they were doing just fine. All right, he's thinking, I just saw what Brandon yes. did. I saw yes. what Daniel did. I saw what Colby did. I'm not going to do that. Yeah, I, I think he's definitely playing it smart there, taking his time. He said, I've seen how this works. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, absolutely wild run. Again, I, I think we're going to see some more guys have a little. After those three, I mean, literally three in a row, wild ride after wild ride. I think we're going to see guys take a little bit safer approach like Mr. Hodges here. You know, we don't call it rock bouncing for nothing, though. <laughs> we really don't. And those guys were definitely bouncing Tires down that hill. aren't necessarily meant to stay in contact they, with the ground they, at all times. They are not. <laughs> they are not. Yes. You can definitely see that bouncing is definitely part of this sport. Again, hearing that buggy roar as it's exiting the top of that hill. for Richard Hodges. What's up, buddy? Johnny Gibbs on the line now. And we've got Kobe Wright joining us <laughs> back up here. Oh, yeah. King Kobe Wright, our current rookie of the year. We had him up here yesterday for our featured driver Friday. And again, being local, we figured that was a great opportunity to showcase. We did uh, Brandon Davis for our 
uh, uh, championship last time. We did our rookie of the year this time, so I figured that was kind of cool to highlight yeah. both you guys. Yep. Um, I've run out of talent. <laughs> <laughs> Fresh out. I don't know where you get it. I think any. there's like a refill station for that somewhere. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so I just, um, first round, I blew a tire right off the bat and finished the course on the flat. Second t- uh, course, come down, pop the front tire. We saw and that. Yes. I didn't know what was broke because I couldn't see. So when they said it was a tire, I just turned around and went for it. Yeah, we, we, we saw you pull over, Justin. You were, I seen you doing like the steering like I break some steering, and he yeah. goes, no, it's just flat. And we immediately say, whip around and start. The, the, the way you hit the throttle, I was like, oh, he's going for it. Yeah, I tried. Johnny Gibbs is head for the head for the big ledge right now. Oh, yeah, he'll throw it in there. Yeah. Johnny, that new buggy is definitely doing work. Oh, yeah. Again, there's only about a vehicle and a half wide path there, so you don't have a whole lot of options, but you want to kind of skate in from the right to the left on that hill. But it's also really steep, too. It's been a tough course, a lot of DNF, so yeah, I think yeah. drivers are going to start being a little more conservative. A lot of I would. unexpected yes. yeah. DNFs. Yeah, again, it's just kind of some really weird DNFs we've had so far today, some weird breakage. And it, none of them are in the same spot. They've right. all been kind of scattered throughout the course. Yeah. yeah, there's no consistency really anywhere. Yeah, and we were saying that you know earlier, this is kind of a medium difficult course for rock bouncers, but when you had that race word in there, anything can happen. Yeah, so. you put a timer on anything, <laughs> you mess up more than normal. Yeah. You tie your you shoes every t- day, but you put the timer on it. Just gonna, that's weird. I was literally going to say, but well, you used Velcro, I guess. Oh, my goodness. We're on the same way, yep. wavelength, I guess. Must be these chairs. Must, that must be it. <laughs> I always wondered. Uh, <laughs> you like this? Yeah, skinny pedals, super yeah, what do you think sweet. About that? Yeah. Clayton Smith gets to take that one home today. That is so Fancy. cool. You know, Johnny Gibbs out there right now. I haven't seen this buggy up close yet, but I'm going to guess it's got the prettiest welds out of anything in this park, knowing that Jake Pike built it. Yeah, Jake Pike coming out of that Midwest Welding Institute, doing some great, great work there. When when they're that pretty, you almost got to just clear coat it. Yeah, um, who's making these? Uh, Jonathan Shepard. Jonathan Shepard is our partner for the Skinny Pedal Awards. Yeah. Come on, get up there. Oh, man. Again, that's getting a little wet and slimy, too, so I think that gets spread out there with some dirt. Yeah. You know. It's, I mean, it's – cameras never do justice. It's it, a steep it really bridge. doesn't. We try and tell people that all the time. I hope they believe us. So you ran right behind Brandon. Yeah. Yeah. Well, no, it was Brandon. There was, there was Dan. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Bowman. Um, yeah, Bowman and Clayton. Uh, what was your thought after watching those guys and their runs? Um <laughs> I don't ever like Easy following Timmy or anybody <laughs> yeah. like that. So. Come on, Johnny, get up there. Nope. No, no, no. no. Get back on your wheels. Nope. Reverse, Dang. reverse, reverse, reverse. That's a – oh, dang it. No, this, that's this, a much uh, better spot to tough. recover from. So. Yeah, this is – this this course is changing. Well, I'll let, let you guys get back to it. So. Yeah, again, are you guys, you're a local guy. You want to give shout outs to you while you're here? Uh, yeah. Um, well, I'm from, from Lancaster, not far um, from here. You know, yeah. 30, 40 minutes. Uh, some of my sponsors, you know, I picked up some sponsors this year and uh, Super Grip Tires, Peco Environmental, um, and some buddies that helped me with everything. Awesome, so. awesome. Because <laughs> we're underestimating everything. Uh, yeah. You just feel like it's going to go well. Clyde but said, I why, like did, the good weather. Yeah. why did y'all do better last year in the rain on the same course? Yeah, yeah. I, don't, I was questioning that. Yeah. <laughs> we're all wondering. When the it's same muddy thing. and nasty, you're just like yeah. the whole time. Yeah. But when it's dry, you're just Sunday cruising <laughs> and getting a little more aggressive. Colby said, I was wondering that. <laughs> yeah, two, I've never, I'll be honest, it's the first tire I've ever popped. In two years, yeah, and I really? popped two in one day. Really, and wow! And destroyed two rims. So. Two. Well, well, I was wondering you're if you about tore a rim due up. then. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. After so two years, yeah. Yeah. I was. I went a whole year on a set of tires without a plug, a hole, or nothing. That's pretty impressive. Not, that's I aired them up 15 pounds at Windrock for the first race and didn't ch- check them until I just popped one. Wow! That's pretty so impressive. I did, wow. and I didn't want to touch them because they didn't have problems. Yeah, so. yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. You're don't like, rock the if boat. I, you if know? I don't look at it, then that means it'll be fine. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, a shout out to my wife and kids for putting up with me racing. Yeah, I got a wife and four little girls, and it's uh, it's a lot of time away from them. But yeah, uh, it gives me a little like a day of freedom to come clear my head. Yep, as busy as I am, so hang out with the buddies, yep. move around, take care of that need for but, speed. Yeah, yeah. So she's definitely the backbone of the family. 
Well, thank you guys and thank enjoy you. Yeah, you too. Thanks for that. Again, that was Colby Reich stepping up with our current rookie of the year. Appreciate him coming up. All right, we got a replay from Johnny here as his rollover. Presented by Rock Racing TV. Man. Oh, man. The struggle bus is out just, here today, guys. Yeah. And there's a few drivers riding it. And it's, again, just some, it's kind of weird freak things. Again, uh, Johnny was hitting it good. The motor was sounding great. Again, that new chassis by Jake Pike was doing well. So. Can watch them get him recovered. Shouldn't take too long. Got to see they got the excavator up there as well as Keith Toolman. Okay, we're going to play that replay just a little further back right there. Coming up, and again, you can see coming from that right line on the dirt to the left line, the rocks, and got just a little too sideways, and just obviously it's such a steep angle it tipped over. And that right there is just so steep that once he landed right there, it's kind of a pretty good drop-off. You can see the top of the chassis kind of fall. Luckily, he was able to get down to that second little access road there and stop uh, on his side. So hopefully that should be an easy recovery for those guys. And uh, <laughs> Johnny's a heck of a driver, so... You know, he, he's a he's kind of a wild man himself. Zach was saying how he gets mad. He can become a different driver after that. <laughs> I, I've seen Bubba Baker We've do that, too. We've seen that more than once. I've seen Bubba get angry and become this whole different driver. So uh, Matt, I've seen you get angry and become well, a whole different driver. I have once or twice. <laughs> so uh, once or twice uh, because sometimes emotions run a little high when you're in the cab strapped in and just walk it up the hill. <laughs> <laughs> I think we've all been yeah. there at one time or another. You know. Yeah, I, 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 I remember seeing you in the the uh, Avenger buggy not that long ago on a very gnarly, gnarly hill. Oh, man, that race at AOP last October. Like, just brutal. I'm just so impressed and proud that the Avenger held together and didn't break. You know, that it's it's a... It's the oldie but a goodie. It I is. mean, it's not yeah. it's not high tech. It's we've had it for how long now, you know? And, a while, yeah. But it is tried and true and proven parts that are in <laughs> there and man, that thing is tough. Cuz I put a beat down on yeah, it. Yeah, you you did. It was I mean like 8 minutes of non-stop thrashing. I, I did not want it to be that long. <laughs> I was ready to get out the top of that dang hill. I bet. I bet. Again, absolutely <laughs> Those thrashing rocks on were it. Rough. Uh, again, heck, heck of a driving. Uh, oh man! I was cheering you on. So again, there was a couple people there filming. I was definitely cheering you on as you were. I mean, and, and definitely like some super rough terrain. It was. It's not my um, my preferred style yeah. of racing. Yeah. The uh, the rough, rocky, you know, hill killing. Yeah. Um, but it was fun to be one of only four drivers that made it out the top. Yeah, it was. Seeing it, as I'm semi retired yeah, yeah. these days, so. and it was again, it would look like it was just such yeah. rough terrain. Yeah, the old Avenger, man, that is one tough buggy. Yeah, it looked just absolutely we'll, gnarly. We'll see if I. See if I can bring it back out for anything again this year. See how uh, it goes. I see, I see it coming. In the out. meantime, I I get my need for speed vicariously. Yes. Out here through all the other drivers. We'll see if we get Big Booty Judy back out. Oh on yeah. Race courses. That's always a good time. For those that don't know, that's my four seat razor. <laughs> yep. Hence the name. <laughs> yeah. Big Booty Judy's definitely doing some work. She does. Hauling hay or <laughs> hauling me around the race I, course. I, I, yeah, I've seen it do it all. I liked your post the other day, too, as well. It was very, very cute. <laughs> Thanks. That was, that was pretty cute, too. It was. Oh, man. Speaking of cute, not really, but Jack Porter is on the line. Here we go with a Jack attack from the Venom Buggy. Another um, classic when we're talking about a rock bouncer. Old Venom's been around, oh, I don't even know how many years now. Quite a while, yeah. And it's one tough buggy, too, because I know Jack puts a, puts a beating on yeah. that thing every time he brings it out. Uh, so we also have a wind rock, just neutral dropping this thing. Just Come on, go, go, go. Out the top, nice. baby. Nice. <laughs> Thank you. 
My dad said, I haven't seen Matt get angry, but I have seen him get hangry. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we have. Again, I think Jack's going to check up a little bit more here. Oh. Yeah, oh. That, man, that's, a, that's a rough landing Just there. Just pinball it. Yeah. Venom can handle it. Yeah. Jack can handle it. Come on, get out that top. Again, as Bree would say, it is all downhill from here. <laughs> Jack also works hard um, with, for recovery, and he does our starting line and safety checks on Friday. So big thank you and shout out to him for all his help out here. 130.752 for Mr. Jack Tech. Okay, that's what I like, what, our fourth or fifth time so far? Fifth time, wow. Then that is a third place time wow. behind uh, the reclaimed racing team, Clayton and Daniel, both with a 117. And then Jack with that 130, Richard we Hodges with a 144, and Mark Carpenter with a 156. <laughs> Ethan Martin out on the course now. I feel like it, Ethan, like monster truck Martin. Like, like he's just like a monster truck driver in that thing. Yeah, we've had five DNFs and five finishes so far. So uh, definitely showing you how kind of crazy this course can be. Come on. Oh! oh. Whoa. Again, kind of hit that rock, kind of bounce him sideways a little bit. Again, there's a real big undercut there as well, so... Gonna be a tough spot to get much They're, momentum yeah. back up there. Yeah, yeah, you have to fight back up down to that access road right there. Oh, there we go. There it is. Lots of momentum carrying into that second run. My goodness. Driving like Richie Keith is back in that for seat real. of that plow boy. For real. Just absolutely getting with it. Point zero one seven for Ethan Martin. Not bad for that wicked crazy recovery there. <laughs> yeah, look, just two wheeling it through there. Matt Buxton wants to know who is top three so far. That would be Clayton Smith with a one seventeen point oh six five, then Dan Bowman with a one seventeen point three hundred, and then Jack Porter with a one thirty. How, however, 
However, we've got Tim Cameron out on the course right now, so I have a feeling things might be about to change. And he's definitely going to want to change that. All right, here we go. That buggy sounds incredible. Just hops just up there. Just walk it right on Just up there. hops it right up. Again, we'll see if he takes more of the calmer approach or more of the launch. Quack, quack the launch over here. I think we'll here. see a moderate sound yeah. from yeah. down the hill. Yeah. A little more calculated. He's got nothing to prove. Take a little time. Got that throttle flutter. Oh, yeah. Definitely part of Timmy's driving oh, yeah. style. Definitely. And again, hearing him get on the gas, off the gas, is kind of just, you know, climbing each ledge separately and taking his time, being smart, making sure to keep the buggy on all four wheels. Again, what's going to be his time? Pretty quick on the downhill. He is. Again, taking his time, but he's still being really quick with it. And here we go. To the finish line. Wow. 9-0.576. Your new leader. Wow. All right. Wow. That just shook up our top three a little bit. That means Clayton and uh, Dan Bowman. Both in the 117s are second and third right now. I see Chris Grigg on the line. Got that wrap on there, that orange metallic wrap. And he also shed in an LSA supercharger, so got him some more whoop pals. We like whoop pals. We do. They are, they're more whoop pals is good. Highly advantageous. This front tire is leaning in a little bit. Like if you look at the back tire and the front tire on the passenger side, it, it looks kind of look like it it's looks like it's leaning tilted. in. Again, maybe something that happened. Could have been a turn that he hit earlier. Whatever it is, doesn't seem to be it, slowing it, it him down. Does not seem to be affecting him much right here at all. Jumping through there. Go, baby, nice. go! This is a wide open design built yeah. buggy. They do great work there. That shop is actually located in Murfreesboro, Tennessee, uh, not too far from my house. Oh, same. <laughs> also Murfreesboro, huh? Oh, Murfreesboro. Whoa! Whoa. Chris is putting on a pretty good run here. I think he Again, might have he, surprised himself a little with that downhill. He did, and, <laughs> and he rolled over right in here on that first he run. Did. So I think he's taking his time, being smart about it. All right. Oh, my Got gosh. Flat. This hill is just eating tires it today. Is. Again, a lot of guys are blowing that tire out when they're landing because that's really hard. Is the air pressure in the room with us today? <laughs> Zach, it's only flat on the bottom. <laughs> Again, being smart there. Some of those, you can see that rear end get real light real fast. Come on, Chris. Finish it up. There we go. There you go. 122.871 for Chris Gregg. That's a fourth place time currently. Wow. I know a guy that's going to change that, hopefully. He is... Uh, 
Mr. Daniels. And uh, Mr. Daniels definitely hell bent on beating that time. I see what you did there. I, I see. I was a Briism. <laughs> I heard that. Again, Daniel, another guy that has no problem, just absolutely monster truck in his rig to the finish line. Daniel had a second place time wow. on course one. There you go. I love the sound of his motor. It's just, just such a big, deep, you know, throaty, throaty sound. It's just incredible. Whoa! Talk about a donkey kick. Coming in hot. Straight on to the finish line. Wow. Wow. 96.324 for Mr. Daniel Heckley right behind Timmy Cameron coming in second place. On that means we've got Tim Cameron in the lead with a 90.5, now followed by Daniel Heckley with a 96. And then Clayton Smith with a 117.0. Right behind Clayton is Dan Bowman with a 117.3. Again, here's another guy that's going to want to try to knock those guys down that podium. Fordzilla himself. Nick Reich had the third fastest time on course one. Yeah, it is Fordzilla. I, I, I started talking. I was like, wait a minute. Is it, is it Fordzilla? I saw the front end. Get Nick. Right, coming all the way from Wisconsin, making that long, long drive. The land of milk and cheese. Yes, and cottage cheese. Patron state of the Molitors. <laughs> also, <fantastic>. yeah. <laughs> go, baby, go. His leg is his rig is so light. That uh, I didn't see him having much trouble with that. Oh! I think I, I, he did. I thought I heard it go poof as he landed. The tire carnage on this course today is insane. I, this is. I, I feel like we're at Rush Springs or something. Yeah. Like. Yeah. Tired that to be leaving the chat yeah. left and right today. That or, that or Disney. Disney's a great place where oh, you see yeah, a lot of flats. Disney's definitely hard on the tires. go there he is again well you can hear that definitely that motor chopping through the through the trees there taking his time coming on those ledges trying to be smart and get a good finish out of it go baby go One three zero point four one eight for Nick Wright. Man, his rim is just toast. He must have clipped a rock when he came down because that rim is pretty shot. Your rim is not round anymore. 
Mm. It is not. Does it look like a four-year-old tried to draw a circle? Yeah, it <laughs> is not. <laughs> Part of it left the chat. Not good. It's not good. Clint Garrison, here we go. Clint Garrison had our fifth place spot on Hill 1. strikes me as a very uh, consistent and smooth driver. There he goes, yeah. Again, very smooth exit on that. We don't often see him getting just super rowdy and pushing it, you know, to the max and getting crazy out there. But he, he lays down those smooth, fast runs. Wow. Just like that. <laughs> And that buggy is absolutely working flawless today. Got to visit with Clint and Savannah a little bit while I stood in line for porta potties earlier. Yeah. A nice long line, yeah. so we had a little bit of a chat. <laughs> oh, good times. They're good times. always fun. They're they're a they great are. couple. And they've been together as long as I've known them, so they're yep. great people. Great people. All right, we're getting word to get three bouncers left. Rip it through the finish line. 101.691 for Clint Garrison. That is a fast time. Is that what, third that place? That is a fast time. That's a third place time Heck right yeah. now. Tim Cameron still in the lead with a 90, followed by Daniel Heckley with a 96, and now Clint Garrison with a 101. And see, speaking of guys that can give us a wild ride, Mr. Cooper Bentley is absolutely a guy that can give us a wild ride. We had Cooper up here chatting with us a little bit earlier in the show. Yeah, oh, whoo. Cooper's such a laid-back guy in person that it's it's interesting that to watch his driving yes. style. Which is he gets much in the buggy and it's like his alter ego takes yes. over. Oh, smooth out! There we go. Cooper had a second-place finish in the bouncer class at Windrock for the season opener. Again, taking his time ripping across that woods area there. And there's actually several big drops here, so. Okay, now, that's probably the smoothest exit we've seen yet of the guys who decided to jump it. Cooper's definitely got a really good feel for this buggy. Looking super oh, yeah. comfortable in there. It, re it really is. And he's had a great, smooth, good run going. You're doing great. Come on, come on. Yeah, he hasn't really. He hasn't had a single bobble on this course no, at all. No, no. See what that time's going to be. Nine seven point wow. one nine eight. That is a third place time right now, right behind Daniel Heckley. We've still got Jay Stortz and then Josh Parrish. And that will wrap up our day of racing here at Wildcat. If you've just joined us recently here, I hope you're enjoying all the bouncer action. We are just about to wrap up round two, and then we've got lots of awards to give away today. Hope you were able to join us uh, earlier in the day or yesterday for some of our other classes of racing. We've been having a great weekend out here at Wildcat Off-Road Park in East Burnstack, Kentucky, here for round two 
at the NRRA, presented by Mickey Thompson and brought to us this weekend by SCS Gearbox. Jay Stortz out on the course now in forward play. Get the pronunciation. I always make jokes. Up. Pronunciation is key there, that forward play buggy. You can obviously have play he on words. He knew what he was doing. Uh, he, he totally did. He, he, he totally doing. did. Again, play on words from the uh, Ford engine. Again, he's one of our few powered Ford vehicles out here this weekend. Come on, Jay. Good, great drone shot there. Go, baby, go. Almost. Oh, he's got it. There we go. Again, just totally peppering the drone. Ride it out. Hey, it worked. Yeah. It worked. We need to call that rock like skid plate rock or yeah, something. Everyone's really just good. sliding over it. We'll just call that whole section skid row. <laughs> They really have been skidding through it today. Man, I, I didn't think of it until the very end of the race. <laughs> there it is. Bring it on home, Jay. Done. Wow. Through the finish line he goes. 122.441. And that means we've got Josh Parrish to wrap up our race this weekend. This is the first time we've seen Josh and his own bouncer out here in a while. We've seen him filling in for Randall P in yeah. Randall's Undertaker buggy a few times. He said he had to knock, knock the dust off this thing. Hadn't been out in a while. He's going to be knocking a lot more dust off after this weekend, though. Driving. It's, it's a little dusty out here at Wildcat. Just a little. But we'll take it. After the mud fest we had at Windrock. Gladly. <laughs> a couple weeks ago. Oh, Backing down to that access road there. <laughs> Looks like he's pulling off. I'm sure he uh -oh. broke something. Oh, man, and it looks like that's going to be it for Josh. Dang it. Okay. All right, again, that wraps up our rock bouncing action here at Wildcat Off-Road Park in East Burnstead, Kentucky, for the second race of the National Rock Racing Association. Presented to you by Mickey Thompson Tires, and this race is brought to you by SCS Gearboxes. We appreciate them all they do. Again, we had an amazing day of racing here. Uh, while Bri gets our totals put up, uh, just thanks to everybody for tuning in live feed. Obviously, thanks to all the fans for showing up. We had an awesome day. I'm sure lots of people are going to go on trail ride. Being it's Saturday, I'm sure lots of fun activities we had. So, But mostly appreciate everybody tuning in live feed on this awesome Easter weekend. You got our top five there? I've got our top five. This is from round two for the RCB Bouncer Cup class. Tim Cameron. Stayed in the lead with a 90.5, followed by Daniel Heckley with a 96, and then Cooper Bentley with a 97, Clint Garrison with a 101, and Clayton Smith with a 117.0. And as an honorable mention, we'll go to sixth place there because Dan Bowman was right behind him <laughs> with a 117.3. I mean, right there. So close, man. So close. What a day of racing. All right, guys, thank you so much for joining us this weekend. I hope you enjoyed all the racing action from all of our classes yesterday and today, yeah, especially tonight in the bouncer class. 
And um, we've enjoyed hanging out with you. We'll see you again at Hot Springs, yep. April sec. Uh, sorry, April twelfth and thirteenth. Yeah, about two in weeks Arkansas. away. Arkansas. Yeah. So again, thank you guys for joining us here on Hillside Live. I'm Bree Molitor. Matthew Holt, as always, wonderful <laughs> good time. Thanks, guys, for tuning in. See you later. We'll see you.